Hey everybody, I'm Mike. I'm Bob. I'm Spencer. And I'm Daniel. And this is the Board Game Rundown. And today we are covering our top 10 underrated hidden gems. Uh, that's one of the fun things about having a channel and talking about games is that we can shed some light on games that maybe just don't get talked about enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we all kind of had our own criteria. We can talk a little bit about that, but I think the overall consensus is you're going to see games that um, maybe are older and don't get talked about enough because this is the cult of the new and only yeah. new games matter apparently any anymore. Yes, um, it is true. Oh, you were saying that sarcastic. We also cover a lot of games from indie publishers yeah. that um, maybe don't have big of a marketing budget right. and therefore don't sell as many copies but still make amazing games that people just don't talk about yeah. or don't know anything about so you're going to get a lot of different reasons for these games popping on our list um, so Bob why don't you go ahead and talk about what, how the games got on your list uh, so what I did is I went through my collection and I was like, oh, nobody ever talks about these games. I listed a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. And then I went through and I kind of started looking at BGA and I was like, okay, which ones are, you know, rated fairly well, don't have a ton of votes, or maybe are older, maybe they got mm -hmm. their votes like early on, but nowadays, like you said, Call to the New, nobody talks about right. them. So I wanted to bring them back up because they're games that I still love, still hit the table. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they love, uh, needs to be shared. Yep, I didn't have any like one specific rule for my list. Exactly. Some of these are on here because they're older and it's it's you just again you don't hear people talking about a lot of older games or even sometimes playing older games. What if you're new to the hobby? What older games should you check out? I've got a few of those on my list. Mm -hmm. I have a few of these that are actually very new releases and I'm just looking at the amount of stuff on their BGG page and I'm like, "Wow, this game has a high rating." but there's not a lot of ratings for it, and there aren't a lot of comments on the game, so people like it, they're just clearly not enough not people about know it. about yeah. that game. Uh, so I have a few new releases that meet that criteria. Uh, yeah, mine's a mixture of a couple things. So first of all, I wanted to go into this avoiding it just being the underrated list again. We've done an underrated list before. Yep. Obviously, we do need an updated version of that, but I thought it would be interesting to try to make that its own video and separate that. Now, that being said, I didn't go back and watch the underrated list, at least not until I had my list. Then I went back and looked to see what it was. And it turns out like half of them are crossovers. Just, <laughs> just it turns out right. I like talking about those games. Um, but the main thing that mattered to me to try to separate that is uh, in underrated, it's just games that I don't feel like get the hype they deserve to where with Hidden Gem, I wanted to go more towards games that people don't know. Um, so underrated might be everyone's played it and people don't like it as much as me to where Hidden Gem to me is no one's heard of this game. Like that, that's just annoying to me. And so what I went on this one is how many votes they have on BGG, how many people have rated the game and then mix that with what its rating is. So if, uh, you know, not a lot of people have rated it, but it's really highly rated. That tells me, man, this is like a hidden gem. No one knows about it, but everyone who plays plays it likes it um, and I'm all my list will also be in order of uh, most votes to least votes like my number one has the least votes um, out of my list the least amount of people have played it and then taken the time to go to BGG and rank it and I, I just think that speaks something to hidden gem but okay. that is me so not so not so much in the order that you enjoy them correct okay. just uh, how, An how actual mathematical how list hidden of, of a gem is yeah. it? so Dan's how, the only one that takes the list yes. thing seriously least likely that you will hear of the game the further down right, we go right. in the yeah. list is uh -huh. what Weird. I tried to yeah. do. so an elitist I Mine's get it yes. arbitrary yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, I've been gaming for 40 years, so I went mostly with gut reactions of things that I remember really made an impact on me, things I really love to play, but I have not heard anything about them in the last five to 10 years. Mm -hmm. Although that's not in my entire list. There are a few on here, which are actually more recent. I do actually have one that's 22 or 23 that I really love the game, but I don't see anyone talking about it. Right. So it just so happens that a lot of them have very few ratings, uh, things like that. Um, but for the most part, it's just more a, uh, these are the ones that I believe are gems that people need to know about. All right. Sweet. Yeah, sometimes we'll, we'll talk about the criteria for these lists ahead of time. And this one, we decided, no, whatever, just whatever you think mm -hmm. makes it a hidden gem, gem to you. or an underrated game to you is what we're going to go with. And so I think that's one of the things that makes lists like this more interesting, just to see how everybody kind of tackles that subject. So mm -hmm. 
Uh, without further ado, we're going to go left to right, which means we start with Bob. Ooh. Okay. Sweet. That's me. That's it. You know what? Before we start, oh. I'm, <laughs> Awkward. I'm loving Spencer's tie. Oh, I, <laughs> I'm a tie guy. I used to have to wear a tie to work every day, and so I appreciate good a good tie. Uh, I like Paisley ties, and the green is just popping. So I'm loving Spencer's tie right now. <laughs> and you. I didn't it's catch green. it until he it's was green? talking. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So how are these two colors? Are they the same for you? Or? I, I, it, well, it's a gray jacket, right? Yes. Okay, yes. yeah. They kind of look great. The shirt and the tie, are they the same? or? <laughs> it's pretty close. Okay, yeah, they're both green. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'd say your shirt kind of matches your jacket more than your tie. Really? Yeah. It's a slightly different green than the yeah. shirt. It's interesting, it's interesting. <laughs> so now that we've gone off on that tangent. Thanks. Yeah, there you, <laughs> go. Just, yeah you, you, you get Whiskey Wednesday Mike on a, on a host well, of the show here, and we're going to go on tangents. We go on our tangents sometimes. <laughs> All right, right, let's get into this Let's mull up the show and put the business up front, shall we? Stage (laughs) left. All right, so we're going to start off with number Number 10. Uh, So my number 10 is actually the highest rated game I have on my list. It's rated 391 at the time of production here. Uh, And that's Abyss. Uh, it has a 2014 release, so I think that's probably why a lot of people don't talk about it these days, because it's one of the older games. But when it came out, I remember it had like the different box arts, and people were like, whoa, this is cool, it's the same game, but it's got different box arts. But the art in this game is fantastic. Um, there's like three different main things you're doing. You're either exploring the depths and recruiting allies. Uh, you're getting help from the council, which is taking stacks of uh, leftover allies from the um, council, or you're using those allies to recruit lords from this uh, council at the, at the very bottom. And I love like the pearls you get with that. It's got a expansion that adds these black pearls in there, which are like uh, bad and whoever has the most of them at the end of the game uh, gets a bunch of penalty points. Um, but it's just a fantastic game. It's super simple. Like my family likes playing this game. I can play this game with uh, Mike and I play it. Like I finally introduced him to it and he really enjoyed it. Uh, and I just feel like more people today should check this game out because it's it's been around for a long time. Not a lot of people play it anymore, and it should hit the table more often because it is a lot of fun. It's got a really unique mechanic to where you are exploring the depths. You don't get first dibs on that card. It might be my turn, but I'm going to flip a card over. Mike, would you like that card? No. Dan, do you want that card? Spencer, nobody wants it? Okay, now it comes to me, and I get a chance to get it. So unless unless somebody buys it, and then i got to flip another card. And that's just a really kind of neat mechanic, the way it works all that out. So. I have never played it. Yeah, it is spoken of highly, mm-hmm. and it's even uh, Levi owns it. It's sitting. Wow. It's sitting. You should ask in, him to play in it in my uh, in my house, and mm-hmm. I uh, don't uh, haven't played it yet. So. Yeah. Kind of comes off as kind of like a hidden gem almost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, this is a very well known game, and mm. I think mainly because it's designed by Bruno Cathala. Uh, mm. And every game that he puts his hands on uh, gets uh, you know a lot of publicity. But it's an older game, and and so uh, you know I think the other way to monitor how much hype a game is getting is just by perusing the Facebook groups. I don't see anybody posting pictures of playing Abyss like today. That, right. That's just not happening. Right. So I think it's a good pick for I that do reason. think I do think that its name, like what you're saying, like people do like it, but it's older. I think its name, it still has it in a category of like, it is on most game shelves. People have heard of it. Right. Like it is sitting yeah. there. It is, yeah. it is still easy to purchase, yep. but it's not the ones being bought. In the modern board game right. like mm-hmm. economy mm-hmm. right now, yeah. right? And like, yeah. and then That's like fair. you go to the Facebook groups and you see board game people and they're posting pictures of the games they're playing and you don't see Abyss, right? Uh, and I, I think you right. should, you know, had it been as prevalent, you know, ten years ago, that's how old the game is, you know, like right. Facebook groups, maybe you would have seen it more often. But I feel like you know, the past few years, it's really exploded and you don't see that anymore. And I think we should see more pictures of it because it is fantastic art. Yeah, honestly, I don't remember if I played it or not. <laughs> really? Wow, you probably not then. Yeah. <laughs> I played it for the first time last year at a meetup, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, it's on Board Game Arena, too. It is. So. Oh, it's a little I, tricky to play. I really got to check that out. Turns can take a long time. <laughs> um, but as long as you're like there and you're playing actively, it'll it'll still go quick. But like normally, like you know, you Board Game Arena, you take a turn, you wait for your next turn. But with the way it works, with do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Okay, now I can do it. Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? That can take a long time. I like right. what they added. The option is that if the pass. card value is under a certain number, you can yep. auto pass, so yep. that really speed the game. I implement that IRL too, so I say, look, um, if, if I flip over a one or two, I'm going to blow by them. Just if it's a three or higher, I'll stop and ask questions, but if you want one of these onesies or twosies, speak up, because I'm just going to roll right past them, but yeah. All right. That's a good pick. Thanks. Abyss. My number 10 is Garento. Uh, 
Uh, Grunto is one I know we all played because we reviewed it on the channel. It's yep. a 7.2. It's ranked 2,816, which is wow. pretty low. This is from Ga Grand Gamers Guild. This is an abstract strategy game that uses a kind of loose sort of... Um, Chinese spirit theme that's on it, but sure. again, it's an abstract. Themes are loose, um, but I just really like the decision in this game, in the decisions in this game, where you're kind of taking tiles off of a stack of tiles, and they all give you different types of abilities, and there's different ways that things get stacked. And so uh, you're kind of thinking through, okay, well, if this piece gets taken this turn, then on the next turn, I might have access to that piece because it's really how those tiles are getting stacked mm -hmm. that kind of determines when you're gonna get to trigger those actions. Uh, everybody's gonna have different ways of scoring those tiles. Um, I really liked Garento, and again, it's ranked really low. Mm -hmm. And again, Grand Gamers Guild, Indie Publisher, uh, yeah. that game just deserves more love than it's getting. Uh, I don't like abstract strategy games, and this is a really good one. It's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I also know for a fact that this game only has 914 voters because this is also my number 10. Nice! Hey, uh, awesome. yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the perfect timing. Great right. pick, Dan! Yeah, I know, it's you too. Like, uh, yeah, only 914 people have uh, have rated this game, which mm -hmm. in the grand scheme, in the grand gamers scheme of, of, grand of, gamers. of things on BGG, that is not a lot. No, no, um, no. I meant to see how many people had voted on Brass Birmingham since that's number one right now, and I never looked that up. Uh, I can so look right now. We'll find out for you. <laughs> uh, just, uh, just to put it in stuff. perspective. But uh, yeah, anyway, everything he said, uh, it's an abstract strategy game. Game that I think is just a fantastic forty three thousand. Yeah, <laughs> so forty three thousand people versus nine hundred right. yeah. um, is a little different. But uh, anyway, I don't have anything to really add. You did a like good job. Uh, but yeah, really. this is one of the games. When I remember when it first came out and we did the review for it. Like mm -hmm. I took the review copy to a lot of the meetups and like everybody loved. It. They're like, oh, this is super unique. They, they really enjoyed it. It's mm -hmm. easy to, to grab the concept and to realize what you're doing yep. and make those decisions. The components are nice. Yeah, I think yeah, they, they had really a nice. slight issue with them sticking together. In they're the almost bag. too nice. Yeah, yeah they're they almost too nice because you. Need to, you, you need them separated, separated, and sometimes they get stuck in like columns yeah. in the bag. Yeah, yeah they're like up. that sort of Lego stacking mm -hmm. style. And yeah. I remember when we were at Origins and uh, we saw the Grand Gamers Guild there, and they had Garanto for sale with the five uh, fifth player expansion. If you bought the game, Ooh. and so I asked Tim, I said, "So are you going to want that review copy back?" And he's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Okay, I like to play this copy." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd love to play that one again. I remember yeah. that one was very it's really good. good. Yeah, uh, I also noticed when I was doing the um, looking up the info for this one, uh, the artist for it is John. Josh Capel, he's the primary graphic designer for Kids Table Board Gaming now, and I think mm. their graphic design is excellent. So just yep. wanted to give a shout out there. Ah, so it's my number 10, and I have a question for you guys. Uh, have you ever played Clue and wish that you were the one that actually did it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you want to play Kill Dr. Lucky. Oh, I've heard of it. I've never played it. Yeah. Me either. Yeah. So this was originally from Cheap Ass Games. It, the cool thing about cheap ass games, and I wanted to get one on here, at least one. They have a whole bunch of really cool games, mm -hmm. uh, Lord of the Fri of the Fries, um, and things like that. Oh, yes, they're they're fantastic, but they would come in like an envelope, and they would only have the essential game pieces. They're going to assume that you already had dice and and things like that, sure. so they just had the essential pieces. But eventually, they started to actually make you know production style uh, ones, and and they did make a production one of Kill Doctor Lucky, which is I think their biggest hit. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is you have a board uh, that's 32 rooms or something like that, and Dr. Lucky is moving step by step through the rooms. Of course, everyone has on their turn, they can move either themselves or Dr. Lucky. You need to get yourself Dr. Lucky and yourself in one room without being in the line of sight of anybody else. And then you have to try to kill him. Now you can do it with your bare fists, but there's uh, uh, candlesticks, ropes, revolvers. Oh yeah, oh, all sorts of things. <laughs> Just well, to name some random objects. Random, random, random objects. objects. <laughs> and like all of them pipe. have. <laughs> well, all of them have like a, a, a fatality value. Uh, so your bare hands have a fatality value of one. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you know, clearly they don't. Candlestick know might be a three. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're trying to, to kill him, and if you fail, you have to leave the room, and then he'll move on. Uh, and they, they've made some expansions, like there's a, now Kill Doctor is Lucky, and his little dog, too. Oh. So there's a little dog <laughs> following him around. That's a Star Wars yeah. reference. Yeah, yeah. yeah yes. <laughs> um, so is it literally it's the first person to kill him wins? Yeah. Okay, nice. But I mean, it's dog. simple, <laughs> but I'm out. it is, it's just, it's, 
mindless fun. It was mm. just a fun game, especially the idea that, hey, I get to be yeah, the one who actually kills this guy. Mm. Right. <laughs> it's the preamble. You play that, then you immediately play, play Clue, clue afterwards. Make, who You're was like, it? Yeah. <laughs> I know well, it was one of you. Spencer was in the room with them. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the room when it happened. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes. I, I I see it at uh, places like the Griffin and stuff all the time, and it, it looks funny, but I didn't know anything about it, so it's it's good to learn about mm. such a a gem that is hidden. Yeah, yeah. Nice. All right, it's gonna take us down to number nine. nine. Uh, so my number nine actually fits Dan's criteria with a whopping six hundred and seventy-four ratings. Oh, that's pretty low, yeah. yeah. Um, but it gets an eight point so lots of people like it, and it's Ascension Tactics. Uh, nice. We did a review for this uh, when my Kickstarter came in, and it's fantastic. If you like deck builders, uh, it's got that same deck builder like ascension that you love, but then you also have miniatures, and you're doing like a con uh, uh, control the territory or king of the hill. That's what I was looking for. Um, and you're moving your heroes around, and you're attacking each other, and you're trying to get, pick up all these power ups and stuff. And it just takes those two types of games and merges them together really well. And um, I think more people should play it and check it out because it's uh, only been rated <coughs> 674 times. So, yeah, I think that uh, Central Taxes is fantastic. This is the one where it was Mike and I at your house against, like, you and Ben or something? Is that the, yeah. I'm thinking of the right game? It okay. was. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah this uh, is a fun game. Yeah. The Ascension games are very well known, but yes. I think this is the part of those games that does get slept on a bit, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, because I think, like, that's kind of been tried before, I think, where they try to combine those types of things, and it just hasn't been done well and I think that um, Ascension Tactics did a really good job at merging those two mechanics. Together. Was this a 22 release? Yes, okay. 2022. So it's a little newer It's relatively too, newer but, but um, only 674 yeah, yeah, is that's, not very yeah, many. Yeah, that's still yeah. low. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the asymmetric powers. They're really fun in that one. They're, yeah. They're way, very powerful. Mm -hmm. And way below all the other Ascension games. Right. Uh, be. The, the team part feels really good and I like how you're, you're essentially like recruiting people to your team by buying those cards. That feels really good. Yeah. It was definitely a game um, with a lot of communication, like w kind of what you're talking about with the team thing feeling good. Like Mike and I were constantly talking back and forth about like, okay, hey, I kind of I can do this. Like uh, if you if you like move here, I can mm -hmm. I can buff your character like this. You know, mm -hmm. like there's a lot of communication which in a in a game like that because I don't really like skirmish games, which this kind of feels like. Yeah. Um, but I said that in the review, I think I said it's it, it feels like a skirmish game. But there's so much else going on that's interesting that uh, it, it totally took it above that uh, mechanism I, I tend to not enjoy. Right. Yeah, I like how it has uh, combos that you can get off of each other. But, of course, mm. everything's public, so I can mm. see, oh, I really don't want him to get that Yeah, thing, if he gets both those minis bad. out at the same time, <laughs> we got to take one of them out because their abilities are going to trigger. Yeah, and it's, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. All right, uh, my number nine is a 2022 release, so fairly new. It's called Challengers. Um, so here's the thing about this one. When I did the research for this, I realized it was a Kinnerspiel winner. <laughs> I'm like, okay, uh, how is that a hidden gem? Yeah, no one knows that game. <laughs> uh, I had never heard of this game before I played it for the first time. And maybe it's because it's published by Pretzel Games uh, or One More Time Games. This is an indie publisher. It's only ranked 1,063. What's interesting about this game is you are essentially playing war. Okay. But you are doing it tournament style. So you're gonna play a short game of war with right, a right. very condensed deck that only has, I don't know, maybe 12 starts cards with, in it. It starts with six. Okay, it seems like more than that, that's it? Well, then you got three A's added to it right at the beginning, and then you can call from there. So you play a game of war with one other person, and then you get an opportunity to build your deck. Uh, so you're adding to your deck, and you're making your deck more powerful. Meanwhile, you're playing a war tournament. So after you build up your deck, you're then going to sit across the table from someone else and play another game of war. Uh, if you win, you gain a trophy. At the end of seven rounds, whoever has the most fans, which is the points on the other side of the trophy, the two people will then play a sudden death winner takes all game. And it's just interesting to see every time you sit down with a different player, how everyone has built their deck differently. Mm -hmm. Like every deck just looks completely different and seeing those kind of strategies and the card synergies that people are using against you. And you're like, oh, I thought about getting that card. Uh, but it's got some interesting set collection where cards are working off of each other. And I just appreciate that this game right out of the box accommodates eight yeah. and everybody's 
playing like you got four different games going right. on and it's just the fact that they took the war mechanic and actually made a really fun kind of deck management tournament game out of it i i was really kind of blown away that they were able to use that mechanic and make an actual fun game out of it mm -hmm. uh because I, I mean i don't think anybody like was like oh yeah i loved playing war as a kid i did <laughs> it's oh, like yeah. I mean, eh, yeah. it's yeah. fine right. you know but this made war fun mm -hmm. and, and i just appreciated they were able to do that plus i know that it's got a beach cup Standalone expansion, which Dan, is Dan's Dan favorite loves standalone word. expansions, and uh, <laughs> you can play with sixteen yeah, players. Combine the two boxes oh together my and play god! You can have this huge, gigantic tournament going on. Uh, we played oh. at Julia's. I had never heard of it, and I'm like, wow, this is really fun. Yeah. Uh, so shame on me, I guess, for not having heard of a previous Kenner Spiel winner. I, I had never heard of it until yeah, right no. now. I hadn't either until we played at Julia's and then but, I, I bought them and we played a seven player game last night and it was a bunch of fun. And well, Your description of it makes me want to have get 64 people together, <laughs> eight of them do it, and these do brackets, like actual yes. brackets on the winners. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that good uh, good uh, convention. Yeah, it'd be a know, great that. convention. Absolutely. Seriously, it'd be mm -hmm. an awesome convention game. Um, uh, this sounds awesome. It kind of I, does. I, uh, this is a slight tangent, but uh, so late, I've been talking about lately how uh, by the time I get home from work, I've been playing a lot of like card games with one of my roommates, Chris. Mm -hmm. Like we we play a lot of Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh lately, and other just card games because uh, they're easy and don't take a lot of mental capacity at that time of night. Um, and uh, one day we were sitting there, and we weren't sure what to do, and I had a deck of cards in my hand, <laughs> and so we were just talking about that, and he he taught me Rummy. I had never played Rummy. Uh, and then I taught him speed just because he was like, what's a game you can teach me really quick and stuff? And I was like, have you ever played speed? I can teach you that in five seconds. It's right. in the name of the game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. Uh, and then uh, uh, he said something like, let's play war or something. And we, we played war for like 40 minutes because that game never freaking ends because it's pure luck and it's horrible. <laughs> but you take that idea of this dumb little fun card game and you do that and I'm like, that sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. I really like the idea of this. One of the neat mechanics that Mike didn't mention was that as you're playing, and then so if you lose, your characters get knocked out and they go to what's called your bench. And then um, a similar people like with the same name will stack, but if they have a different name, they go to a different spot. And then once your bench is full, if you lose again there's, and you're put, you, have, you can't put your person on the bench, you lose. So you can uh, lose by running out of cards or you lose by filling up your bench. So you kind of want to try to build your deck with only so many different types of cards because right. you're like, oh, I've got, you know, 10 unique cards. Like, well, your bench holds five. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Right. yeah, you're trying to stack similar cards so mm -hmm. that your bench doesn't fill as fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then yeah, the, the Beach really Cup box it. adds like um, asymmetrical abilities, which are, they're called trainers. So everybody gets like two at the beginning. You choose one that you get to keep. Uh, and then, yeah, that kind of adds a little bit more uh, zhuzh to the game there. Yeah, no, I like sounds it. I, I love next step games. This mm -hmm. sounds like a really good, like, I get my family yeah, to play absolutely. this kind of thing, you know? Yep. So. Challengers, check it out. Yep. Uh, okay, that's on me now. Number nine, uh, I doubt any of you guys have played this. It's surely not on your list. That's Linky. Uh, Linky wow. is 5,222 as of me taking these notes. Uh, and it has 810 votes, and it is currently a 6.4. So people do tend to like it. I honestly wasn't expecting to be rated that high, but it is a trivia game that it has a very simple gimmick, and that is, uh, first of all, whenever you get a question right, you get that letter that the question was, and you're trying to spell the word Linky. That's, that's the main gimmick of the word. The first person to spell the word Linky wins. Uh, and then the thing that I really like about it that is so unique to me is how it actually works is each card has like four questions on it. And then what the actual answer to the thing is how do those four answers relate, right? So like the, the card might have four trivia questions. It's like, this is what a lion tamer uses to tame a lion. This is a fashionable hat worn in the 50s, right? And so you're going through and you're answering all these questions in your head and you're like, okay, a whip, a fedora, right? And you're doing that and then, okay, so the actual answer is Indiana Jones. That's how those mm, things relate. So you're, so you're mentally connecting the four or five answers in your head and then you're answering the, re the relationship question, between yeah. them. And I just find that a really fun, unique mental arithmetic for a trivia game and I really like it. Um, and not a lot of people have heard of it. Uh, it's I just got it because it's like a tiny little card game box, you know. I got it at a at a game store once. I was just like, oh, I like trivia games. I'll try it out. And uh, I play it 
pretty often. I like it a lot. So. We may play it together once. This Maybe is L I N K E E. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. I was just trying to find it. Yeah, I know. Sounds uh, fun. Big Potato Games 2012 release. I have not heard wow. of this. Big Potato Games. Big Potato. Oh, Big Potato. Sorry. Oh, see, now uh, uh, Bob's over there. Mm, kind of hungry. The game sounds delicious. Now <laughs> take a break for Bob's lunch. But uh, anyway, yeah, we. I, I really like trivia games. I know Half Truths is a, is, a, is a really fun one that came out uh, you know, recently. And uh, Linky is one I keep going back to. So I recommend it. Okay. So my number nine is also an older game. came out in 99. Um, it's called Button Men. Uh, so the original idea of this game was your character was a button and you'd wear it and you went around the convention, I believe it was at Origins, mm. and you'd see someone else with it and you challenge each other to combat. Okay. And it's dice. So each button is a character and they have a certain number of dice of different values uh, and you're rolling them. The lowest number gets to go first and you're trying to either use one die to be larger than another one and take it out or get multiple dice in a skill attack to exactly equal another die. Um, but they then started, I mean, that's super easy. Then they were like, well, we're gonna have these variable dice where you get to choose what kind of die it is and you get to do it between rounds. So you start to get more strategy in there. And then they started to introduce, oh yeah, we're gonna have these different kinds of dice. This is attack die, these are chaos die. Uh, all sorts of crazy things. There was a huge list of these dice, and they started to get artists like Phil Foglio, who did, um, oh, I'm, I'm blanking. But anyway, he's a big artist, and he uh, had a, his own version of this and tons of things in that one. Mm. Now it's not just dice. There's one called Originals, which you can you actually just have a, it's a, in a box and everything. So Button Men, I thought was, it's fun, it's quick. Uh, I really like the idea of just seeing someone in, Challenging you. them exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, and since it uh, it has those little strategies, it actually get pretty darn deep, much deeper than you think it would get. Uh, yeah, and this one actually fits the category. Only eight hundred and twenty-four nice. people have rated it. Yeah, it's like number five thousand. Yeah, I wish I would have thought of Dan's uh, criteria before I made my my list. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember playing this one a lot when I was mm. younger. Cool. Uh, um, I just want to point out really quick before we move on. I just uh, accidentally peeked at uh, Spencer's thing. He has a paragraph written for every single freaking one. It's like an essay over here. Well, he's <laughs> like, a writer. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I just saw it and I was like, oh my goodness. Well, you just spoil the whole list. Yeah. Pause. 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 Takes us to number eight. Uh, so my number eight is again one that would fit Dan's criteria with a paltry sixty-seven votes. Oh my goodness! Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> that one wins. This game is ranked eleven thousand five hundred with those paltry sixty-seven votes. But Shadow Network. Is fantastic. Wow. Yes. Seriously? Yes. I know, right? Nobody's heard of this game. Wow. And it's great. And it's Seriously. like, a, you know, set back in like the, uh, what is that, Dan, the 60s? 70s? Yeah, Cold War. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a callback. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, you're supposed to say, uh, uh, what is it? I, I think 80s is the thing that I used to oh, literally 80s. say for <laughs> everything. I just say it for 80s. every game. <laughs> <laughs> just, it, it makes it easier. Yeah. It's got all these Vikings. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like the 80s. Because it could be like the 1780s. 1780s. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, 1780s actually would have been a probably more interesting accurate. shout. Um, but no, it's like you're spies and you're like, um, you're gaining this information, but then the information is like leaking out to different uh, worker placement areas. And then when it's not your turn, you're con using all these resource conversions to uh, try to complete these contracts and everything. And it's just, it's super unique. Uh, it looks great. It fits in this little tiny box and uh, it's fantastic. We had the opportunity to do like a preview, I believe it was, a while back. And we had a bunch of fun with it. Uh, it was one of Dan's favorite games. Um, and yeah, it's 2021 release. I think more people should know about it. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, being slightly newer mm -hmm. um, and being from a smaller Small publisher, or whatever, are both mm -hmm. going to impact that. Talent to, Strike uh, Studios. It, it wouldn't have anything to do with the fact that your picture's on one of the cards. Yeah, right. <laughs> Bob's in the game. If I'm you in the game. Yeah, Dan yeah. should have been in the game. He should have been. Yeah, if you go, you play the um, game, and you see yeah. one that doesn't have like a person. It was supposed to be him. <laughs> yeah, there's like there's one card in the game that like kind of looks like a CG person, and I'm not sure if that is from the mess up that. 
was me supposed to be in the game, or if that's just a photo someone submitted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, it could be, you know. Yeah. Um, by the way, the, there's a really famous board game called like 876 Vikings or something. So I guess yes. the, oh, yeah, yeah. I guess the 880s would have been 880s the, the most yeah, accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's what I had that game. <laughs> anyway, oh yeah. nice, I haven't played it. It's, it's looks people tend to say it's really yeah, good. it's, got it's a kind good. of a hidden gem. Really, it kind of is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I forgot about this one. Uh, wow. It's really good. Yeah. I, it didn't even make my honorable mentions, which is sad. I wrote like wow. 25 day, games down. Dang. You just talk about it so much, I didn't realize no one else talks about it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah. It, it's, we it's, reviewed it. The three of us did, yeah. actually. I remember yeah. making the joke that there's so much to do when it's not your turn. Yeah. I was actually asking Spencer to slow down on his <laughs> yeah. turn. Yeah. That's I was crazy still talk. doing stuff. I'm like, no, Spencer, I'm still doing stuff. Can you find more to do? Uh, <laughs> Play another game in the yeah. meantime. It, it handles downtime maybe better than any game I've yep. ever seen. It's yep. really good. Yeah, and seeding the board was such a brilliant idea. I loved it. Yeah. And, and thematic. Yes. It's literally Absolutely. leaking Fantastic. information. It's mm-hmm. so it's so clever. Yep. Good Gosh, pick. Wow, man. I yeah. forgot to put it on my list. Shame. Goodness. Shame. All right, my number eight is Equinox. Really? Uh, so oh, this is one. one where I thought maybe, okay, it's a Reiner Knizia, right. and maybe that makes it not a hidden gem, except for this is a 2021 release that's ranked six, uh, 2,620, even though it's published by Plan B Games, which is a very well-known publisher. This is a, a very unique bidding game by Reiner Knizia, where you're kind of trying to bid on an animal that's going to, you're kind of predicting with your bids. Mm-hmm, right. You're trying to predict what card is going to last longer in this game. Um, I played it once and it's been like a year and a half. So besides the interesting bidding mechanism, I'm a little bit fuzzy on mechanics, so you have to pardon me. I just know that it doesn't get enough love and it was really, really unique. I mean, the bidding is 90% of the game, but yeah, at the start you pick an animal and you like- You don't have to. Uh, that's true, yeah. you don't have to. Uh, at the beginning you get a chance to pick an animal and put it face down, and then yeah, throughout the game you're bidding on uh, how many, how long you think someone's gonna make it, and the earlier you bid, the more points it's worth if they make it to the end. So if you yeah. bid in the first round and they make it all the way to the end, good call, or you can wait until there's only two rounds left and be like, well this one's probably gonna make it, but you're not gonna give very many points for it. And and you have uh, like a certain amount of bidding things you can use throughout the game, and so you have to kind of space out when you're doing that, because that's all you get, and then you just add up all your bids at the end of the game. If you're, how many of your creatures made it? What round did you bid on them on? Add up your points. And whoever has the most in a certain creature gets that creature's ability. symmetric ability, which right. is actually, I think, is the best part of the game because right. the abilities yeah. are just amazing. They're very powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the one that steals another one's ability. Um, I mean, just the chameleon. The, the chameleon. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there was one where uh, the scoring system was a little unusual, and this one like took advantage of the scoring system. Mm-hmm. Uh, like everything was. A half a point more, or something weird like that. Oh right! So you're saying the chameleon looks like something else? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, this game sucks. <laughs> I, really, I really like. That I was game. not a big fan. Uh, of it. I, s- I said you weren't a fan of the game. You're saying no, oh, really? Okay. No, yeah, okay. Tim really Bob enjoyed saw, it, saw but yeah, I didn't. I didn't really. It was okay. Uh, this actually, I said earlier, I didn't really have any honorable mentions wrote down. I did think about this one, but I, I never looked up the stats, and so I never wrote it down as an honorable mention, just because I wasn't sure if it fit in my category. Because I was like, that must be a well-known game. Like I, I don't know. I, 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 I did really it like it. Out. Yeah. It's only rated at 6.7, which I think is pretty oh, low. Yeah. I mean, I'd at least give it an so you think it's an underrated game. I think it's underrated <laughs> as well. Yeah, and it, um, what, uh, as we were doing ratings, 1.6K. So, yeah. okay. uh, um, you know, 1,600 ratings, a little low, uh, especially, again, for a Kinesia game. Uh, also, sure. the art is fantastic. It There's a good golem version that looks just as good. Mm-hmm. And those like bidding tiles, which kind of remind me of skipping stones, oh, honestly. they're very nice. <laughs> they're, they're way nicer than any bidding token needs to be, but the, the production quality is fantastic. It's a very unique game. Check it out. Yep. Uh, my number eight is Creo or Creus. I brought this game up before. As a matter of fact, it's the only game on the channel I think that I've done a solo spotlight video on because I just don't think 
anyone's heard of this game. Uh, I taught it to some of you at Gen Con last year. Uh, this is ranked 5,540. It has 476 votes and it has a 6.6 .6 average rating. This is a limited communication game, cooperative. Uh, so the reason I like this game so much is because I think a lot of those games fall flat. I don't like the game. I don't like um, the mind. Uh, and they are just so well regarded. And then you have a game like Creo that I just think is so much better than those games and no one talks about. And the main theme here is you are all like uh, titans or, or gods or something creating a universe and you have to create it in the correct order. So everyone has all their cards oh, at the yeah, start of the yeah. game and you are playing, you are playing uh, things like atmosphere, uh, rivers, you're, you're playing stuff like that and you have to play them in the correct order to at the end create a sustainable planet. And depending on how far you get is how well you did. As long as you get to the point of having like oxygen and water, right. you technically have a survival planet, but you don't get very many points because there's no like life or anything on it like yet. It, it will be eventually, right, with water and air, but but not there yet. And, and the more things you get on it, the more points you get. It was a difficult game, I remember. Yeah, it was difficult. I remember you want to play it many times. Yeah, and it starts like like macro, right? Because you saw like, like the bigger things, like, like you're saying, like the atmosphere, and yeah, then, like, the planet, and then you got yeah. like these elements. As long as you have these elements, you can play something underneath. Them. Exactly, but, the, yeah. but it's also hidden. Play. You have to like right. hope the other person knows what to do. Yes, yeah. everyone well, puts the away card the rain down. Card. There goes this card. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> puts a card down face down, and then you flip them. And uh, we always uh, flipped them one at a time or whatever. But I, I don't know what it actually says in the rules. And then there are bad cards in there. Like uh, if you end the game uh, and this card is still in your hand, you automatically lose. So you have to play that before the end of the game, but it does stuff like destroys part of the board stuff, so you have to time your placement of that really well, because again, you can't talk about what you're playing, except that everyone has these little tokens, I can't remember what they're called, and basically you can spend them to like show someone a card from your hand or to blindly swap cards with another player and stuff. And so basically, if I swap cards with Mike and Mike is going before me, I'm basically saying, hey, play this card, right, yeah, <laughs> but like this card but with as out. little communication yeah, yeah. as possible, right? Um, and then also the interesting thing of that is at the start of the game, depending on player count, there's a certain amount of those blue tokens. Let's say there's six. Everyone chooses in turn order how many they're going to take without communicating about it, really. You just you just say, I'm going to take three, I'm going to take two, and Bob might get stuck with none, and that's our economy for the entire game. If I take three, until I spend those three, they do not go back into the economy. Because when you play certain cards, you get to take some of those tokens from the center, but if there's none in the center, you don't get any. So you're kind of controlling where that economy is and then hopefully like putting it back in the center in time for someone else to take it and you keep uh, that going so that you keep showing people clues uh it's just uh, this is my favorite limited communication card or game in that style like the mind and stuff like that and this is the one game also mike that i believe is out of print but it is not hard to find like i saw it on a, on a website for like 21 dollars or something like okay. so it's not like it's like a crazy right. blown out price yeah. because yeah. of that but i don't think it's technically it, yeah, it's like out of print, but not hard to find. It's in that middle it's area. Chris with a K, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's t the, the version that I have is called Creo, but I believe that was like a short run US version or something. And the version that's famous, if you look it up on BGG, is Creus, K R E U S, I believe. Um, that's the one that always pops up whenever you like Google the game. So I don't, I don't exactly know what's going on there. I'm not an expert on the marketing of this game. Uh, but yeah, the one that I have is called Creo. So at some point, there was another version of it. Uh, just a really good game. And also, uh, not something I usually care about. But for anyone who does care, a uh, completely language independent game as well. That's true. It's all yeah, just icons. icons and colors. Uh, and I don't know, Bob, when you played it, you didn't seem to have a problem with the colors. Icons were There's enough, technically yeah. icons on mm -hmm. it. They're, they're kind of mixed into the color, but they are there. Anyway, that is Creo. If you like that type of game, I strongly suggest checking out if you can find it for an understandable price. Okay, my number eight is an older game again, but this one has had a reprint more recently, uh, not terribly recently. Uh, and the reason I include this game in the list is because there used to be people who LARPed this game. Nice. It's called Wiz War. Wiz War is a game where you have two to four players and you're all playing as wizards and you're just going around a map and the map has, you know, walls and obstacles and things in the way and everyone has their own little treasure uh, and you have a deck of cards and the cards are different spells that you can do, but they're crazy things, you know, turning yourself into werewolf or, or things like that. Um, and 
you can start manipulating the walls in the thing or destroy objects. And your goal is to either, we get two points and you get a point by stealing someone else's treasure and making it back to your own or by killing another player. Or of course you can be the last man standing and you win. Um, but I've seen people do this. They have a room set up and they are live action playing this. Hmm. It is insane. And I've seen people do these uh, three, printed layouts are just amazing of these things with multiple levels and stuff mm. uh, and the newer version it's got really good art on it um, and it is it's a mindless fun it's I'm not gonna say this is a deep strategy game but it's funny because all the cars do fun things uh, and I just think that especially in the, the more recent version there is strategy in it and there there is uh, a lot of uh, fun and there's interaction and I I think more people need to know about this yeah, this old it. game. I know it's from like 83. Oh, jeez. 83, yeah. So old. Yeah, that's like... Oh, that's not my oldest. Bob old. <laughs> well, <laughs> my oldest song is older than me. Not even as old. <laughs> that's not even as old as me. <laughs> oh. We'll see when we come down to my number, I don't know. Nice. Uh, six. I've heard of Wiz War. <laughs> that's it. I've heard of it, but I had no idea anything about no? it. I just know that name. Yeah. Like it's it's and probably from like convention LARP circuits too. Quite possibly, probably quite possibly. Name, but. but I haven't seen them do that in a long time. Um, I just yeah. yeah. Needs yeah. a little bit of love. All right, Wiz War. That's gonna take us down to number seven. Uh, okay, so my number seven is one of the more popular ones, but it's a decade old. Uh, it does have 6,000 ratings, but nobody talks about this game. And I constantly try to play this game, and like it's hard for me to get at the table. My first introduction to programmed movement, and it's Lords of Zidit. Uh, X I D I T. Yep. I think it's Zidit. Um, but you've got these little dials with like five, uh, you get these little cardboard things with these five dials on there and you're secretly planning your moves. Uh, and then when you're ready in player order, you're gonna reveal, move your guy along those roads, stop and pick up resources and you like are blocking people off. You're taking the resources before it's like, damn it, I was gonna cut across there. And like, I love that whole like trying to plan your movements around and you're kind of doing set collection with it and everything. And it's just, it's really fun. And I think that more people should play this game. Like when I first got it, when I first played it at, at JuliaCon, uh, I loved it. I went out and picked up a copy. Uh, I got to play it with my um, girlfriend at the time and some of her friends, and they really enjoyed it. And I played it a couple more times after that. And then in the past eight years, I don't think I've gotten this thing to the table. And it's it's unfortunate because I, I really enjoy it. I love the program movement of it. And I think more people should play this game. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's been out for a while. It's one I've always it's wanted to check out yeah. and just have it. Yeah. I know the name. Again, I know, yeah. I know how to spell zit it because I've seen it and heard it so many times and mm -hmm. I, I didn't know anything about it. I yeah. just, people like it. That's mm -hmm. all I know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's really good. And like, if you liked, uh, I mean, it's not as, as goofy fun as the, um, the mechs versus minions, right. those program movements and whatnot, but it's, it's still a very unique, uh, like I said, you're programming like four or five movements like in a row, and then you're moving them down these colored arrows, which I don't have a problem with the colors because they use like black, blue, and yellow, and green, so it's easy to tell them apart. Uh, and you're moving around, and you're collecting all these, um, recruiting all these little uh, minis, and then you're using those minis to defeat these monsters and whatnot. And it's it's a bunch of fun. I, I, want, I want to play it more. How do you spell that? Is it just X I D I T? Mm -hmm. There might it's be got an accent really on it, which nice cool. art. I like the look oh, of this yeah. game. It, it's nice. Yeah, it's got a cool font. It's got it cool it. art. Yeah, that's what he said. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I just, I'm, my apologies. Okay. Uh, yeah, you should guys uh, check that out. Good older one that's flew under the radar. Yep. All right, my number seven is relatively new, but doesn't get enough love. It's Fossilus. Uh, so Fossilus is one that we reviewed on the channel. This is from Kids Table Board Gaming, designed by David Diaz. It's only ranked uh, 2,527. And uh, again, I talked about how I really like the graphic design of all the Kids Table Board Game games. Uh, they just pop off the box. Mm. Um, and this one is no exception to that. I just, I really like the look of the game. And it's, it's you know, all of the games from this company are very approachable and you could teach them to casual gamers and kids. I think this one is true as well. And this one actually might be closer to a medium weight game than some of their other games. But ultimately what you're doing is, is you're starting off as archeologists on this board and you're sliding around 
the ground. You're you're digging stuff digging up through. to get yeah. to fossils that are underneath you. But you have to get these like really chunky acrylic chunky. tiles off the board, and then you physically grab tweezers and dig the fossil out that you want, which is a really satisfying experience, by the way. Um, it's like just, operation. It really is. Like you don't get electrified more the <laughs> uh, And I really wasn't sure if that was just like a gimmicky thing, but it actually felt really good digging those those fossils out of there. And meanwhile, you're collecting sets of fossils, and you're trying to create dinosaurs or lure dinosaurs to your uh, lure? lure them. I don't know. Collect. You're trying Collect to get them. <laughs> you're, trying to, you're trying to get uh, the, the, <laughs> right? in the journal, the paleontology journals. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't know what to call that there. Uh, <laughs> I do know that the set collecting feels really good because mm. you can score a lot of points based off of the different icons that the dinosaurs have. I also know that there's a, a legit way to, to win just by off of the fossils that you collect. Uh, typically, you have to use the fossils to to get those dinosaurs. Some of the dinosaur cards. But there's some of them are, that are just really, really high scoring fossils that right. you just keep oh, just to score skull. the points skull, on them. Points. Yep, uh, and then it's got really cool like asymmetric powers that you can pick up as you play as well. I just thought for a game that plays in 45 minutes that's very approachable, it has really good solid, me solid mechanics, and the components are excellent. So I, I was just really impressed with everything inside of this box, and I think it plays more like a medium weight game than right. what the box and components may tell you that it does. Or even the publisher, right? Because you talk about kids' table board games. Right. And you think it's going to be for kids. But no, I think they do a really good job with like, well, here's a set of rules for like basically adults can play it. But you can, if you want to play with kids, take this one rule, leave that out. Mm -hmm. Play the rest of the game with them mm -hmm. and they'll enjoy yeah. it. They'll have a good time playing it. And once they start to grab it, they know what's going on. You can add that rule back in and then it increases the, you know, the difficulty of that game. And they do a lot of games like that. I think they do a good job with it. Yep, this yep. one was my favorite that I've played of there so far. Yeah. So Fossilus yeah. is my number seven. I remember seeing that at one of the cons. I I was definitely interested in it. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I did not get a chance to demo it. Yeah, you, so. well, and you were you missed out the day we played it here. I know I did, mm -hmm. and That's I am the one who loves it. dinosaurs. That's why we it's still way. in the group. We'll have we to we, play we, it we all know that you hate dinosaurs, so we don't want to <laughs> yeah. so yeah. expose Let's not you. burden him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's still in the group, so we'll definitely have to play it again. I'd love to get it played again. So. Yeah. Uh, my number seven is Home Stretch. Hmm. Kick in the William Tell Overture. <laughs> we can't afford it's, it's public that. domain. Okay, fine. Has <laughs> <laughs> he been dead for fifty years already? Uh, it's it's a uh, it's classical music. Ninety five years. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Home Stretch is five thousand nine oh seven. And has 346 votes, wow. and it is um, it's it's just a really dumb, fun betting game. I again, I don't like betting games in general. Mm -hmm. These yahoos over here talk up ready, set, bet, and stuff right. like that all the time. And my go-to is home stretch, and I, I think that's just because it has the perfect amount of it has the bidding in it, and you mm -hmm. have to be good at picking the right stuff in order to win. But also, it's kind of just like, let's see what happens, <laughs> like, you know? Uh, and it, it's just a really dumb fun. Every time I've played this game that I can recall, it has turned into blasting the William Tell Overture and everyone just kind of like standing around the table and saying like, go number seven, <laughs> you know? And it, it's just so dumb. And yes, that means that, is it the game that's really that fun or just the environment you and your really fun not loser group is, totally is losers. creating <laughs> um, at the table. Sure, that's an argument for another day, but I just don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, the main point of the thing is you're <coughs> collecting cards of horses, and uh, if you uh, if you have that horse, Winning like if horse. you have the eight horse, then you have a uh, you have some ownership of that, and you will get a part of the winnings if eight wins. So if I have one eight card and Bob has two eight cards, he will get a higher percentage of the winnings. I don't remember exactly how all that works. It's been so long since I've played. Right. But I love home stretch, and every time we do a list like this, I bring it up. Uh, I just I think that. Um, Especially that kind of like gambling games. Uh, I don't know if like resurgence is the right word, but there's been a lot lately that like people really liked, and I'd kind of like to see like a Restoration Games reprint of like a Home Stretch or something. You know, like let's let's bring back this classic game, update its rules slightly, and just mm -hmm. have a have another fun version of Home Stretch. Uh, between the Ready Set Bet and Home Stretch, I kind of like Home Stretch better. I feel like it has a bit more strategy to really? it. Really, you think? Okay. Yeah, because I think like you know Ready Set Bet's fun, and you're yelling at the the app or the the TV to you know to go faster. Go 
super fast, and you're trying to do things super quick. But I feel like uh, home stretch is not as fast paced, and it allows for, for sure. more strategy uh, involved. I think the something that really gets home stretch for people, and I honestly don't remember how this works in Ready Set Bet. Little but, horse minis. Uh, well, so there's little horse minis, which is fun. But also, <laughs> what I was gonna say is, it's basically a rolling move. Like yeah, you're just basically. rolling dice and, and it's like, oh, we rolled a seven, seven moves or whatever <laughs> like that. And so I can see people look at that and saying like, this isn't even a game. And it's like, yeah, but yeah. try it, <laughs> you know, it's give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I will say also, if you're trying to look this up, it is home stretch, one word, but both are capitalized. Like the H and the S are capitalized. But they're mushy. Very weird marketing thing. Last time I talked about this game, like two years ago, uh, I remember, uh, not being able to find it when I was looking for it because the trying to Google that is like so anti like logic. Yeah, like, <laughs> so, no, that's not the word you meant. You meant this, right? No, yeah. no, 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 I want this. No, no you, you want it. Home stretch <laughs> two words. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so uh, home stretch. If you like that kind of gambling, especially horse racing, uh, this yeah. is a fun one. Get your big hat and your fancy drink and have some fun. So I love these kind of games, uh, especially Ready Set Bet. I like long shot. I like racing. I like gambling in games. And Dan has mentioned this on other lists and many other times. I bought a used copy last oh, month. Yeah, nice. So, nice. You last nice. month, too. Uh, nice. Yeah. So uh, I haven't played it yet. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, nice. sure. Awesome. All right. My number seven, another one from Cheap Ass Games. It's from 1999 called Brawl. This is a very fast-paced, chaotic board game, or the card game, and I really love the chaotic aspect of it. The idea is everyone has a deck that is a different character, and so the decks are going to be built slightly differently because of the strengths and weaknesses of that character. Uh, there's going to be two bases that are put out, and you're trying to win the bases. You can put out a third base, I think you can put out a fourth base. Um, but the idea is on each base, you're putting, putting down hits, and the hit will come in either green, red, or blue. And you can only put down hits of that type once you put one down. But your opponent can put a block on top of that. And you might be able to put something called a press on top of that so you can keep going. And then as you keep going, you're like, no, I don't like that one. I'm going to use a clear. I'm just going to get rid of that one. And it's gone. Hmm. And you're like, oh, well, uh, th thanks. And someone plays another base, or he's like, I know he's going to clear that one. I'm going to play a base on the other side. You can't clear a base unless it's on the, the end. So you're preventing him from doing it. Or there's so many different cards, so many different characters. Uh, the thing that's fun about this one is it's real time. There's no taking turns. You're just going at it. Nice. Chaos. Yeah, yeah. it's fantastic. I love that game. The chaos is, is great. Um, and different characters add new abilities, especially as they go a little further on. Again, you have the Phil Foglio stuff. There's one that does dodge where you put it on top of the um, hits and it just nullifies all the hits beneath it. But the hits above it can still count. Uh, I I love this game. I love the the, the clearing things, the the different aspects. Uh, yeah, I mean, all the different characters. There's so many of them. I wish that uh, that I had it. <laughs> oh, good to know. <laughs> yeah. I guess we won't my be playing sister, that. <laughs> my sister has it. I yeah. gotta get it from her. So is it hard to find then? You can't. It, it I'm not certain. I, I haven't tried. Yeah. I should look. Yeah. Um, I don't think it would be too hard to find. Okay. I mean, it wasn't like a completely unknown. Right. Uh, back and they the made day. enough copies. That's another thing too. Is yeah. Games yeah. like that from that long ago, they didn't make a, a big print run. It could be hard to. You know, limit, Readily limited. available online. There you go. Awesome. Although awesome. you should go to your local game store first. Yeah. <laughs> Being yeah. that it's older, some sure. game stores may you. not stock it. Right? But also, uh, they would release new uh, like expansions or whatever. Kind of expansions, you do new characters and things, mm -hmm. or later. So it, um, I don't remember when the last one was released, but okay. it's not entirely impossible that they make another okay. one. Yeah, sweet. Uh, that takes us down to number six. Right. So my number six, I believe, is my oldest game on the Mine list. Too. It is Ooh. 20 years old, so 2004. Oh. It was 20 years ago. <laughs> Lord help me. Um, this one is Fire and Axe, a Viking saga. Uh, this is one of my favorite Viking games. Uh, the first time I, I played this, uh, it was right around the time that Blood Rage came out. There's a bunch of Viking games that were coming big around then. 
and um, this one kind of got overshadowed. Uh, it, it has 3,000 ratings, but it is from, like I said, 20 years ago. But this has, it's a really unique, like, uh, pick up and delivery type of game. But there's also some, I mean, you're Vikings, hey, you know, you're trying to make your way around the Mediterranean <laughs> and take over uh, some of the cities and whatnot. Um, <laughs> but you're also, like, uh, one of the coolest mechanics that, that's unique to this game is there's this wind dial. And so at, uh, and it turns, and then as you're moving around, depending on what direction you're going, if you're going with the wind, you get extra moves. If you're going against the wind, you don't move quite as far. But then you can play cards that are like prayers to the gods to have them shift the winds in your favor so you can move them further. And I think that's just a super unique mechanic that I wish more games had. Like, if you're playing games where you have a boat that's being pushed by air, being able to manipulate that air to make, oh, I know he's trying to go that way. I'm going to turn the wind against him, so he's going to take more turns and more moves to get over to England to try to take that city you know, or to trade all those first to them because that's what they're trying to do. And that's the thing is you can try to move toward more of an aggressive strategy where you're trying to sack more cities. Or you can say, you know what, I'm not going to be aggressive. I'm just going to be a trader. And you're going to take fish from here and deliver them over there and pick up these furs and take them over there. And there's just a lot of different things that you can do. And I just I feel like this game is just overlooked way too much. So that um that's one of the things that looks so interesting about there was a game that came out called like Mythwind or something but it was a game oh, yeah, where you're yeah, like yeah. you're like airships that were fighting and the whole point of the game was taking advantage of the wind Which way to the like wind drift is going? and yeah. stuff like that and i yeah th that kind of stuff is interesting but mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, uh, I haven't played this i've seen it at yep. your place uh, yep. but I, I have not played this one yeah would definitely like to hit get it on the table again so. they do know that you can actually uh sail into the wind there's yeah. methods for doing it that yeah. goes faster. No one ever. Well, like, yeah, you well, just yeah. you just put a jet engine on the back. <laughs> yes, of yes. course. Like, uh, <laughs> Stroke. Yeah, of course. Stroke. <laughs> Stroke. <laughs> but no, yeah, I, know, I, I realize. <coughs> Otherwise, you can only really sail like one direction at certain times of the year. Yeah. The wind blows that way. We're going this way. <laughs> <laughs> so it's either, but, but but you don't move as fast, right? Because I, I know I, I'd, I'd have to look that up. Well, I mean, I would just think you know physics, right? I can't right. sail. In, yeah, you can use it to kind of go that way, but you can't well, really sail you, as you, fast. Well, you you go to half sail. Half, half right. mass? Half mass. Yeah. So that's, no, that's you're trying to get the angle up properly right. with the wind. Right. So and you're getting, yeah. creating a vacuum. You go on to the back half mass and you angle your yeah. sail, and then you angle so that the wind. Yeah, we all know sailing. So yeah. The wind is like. <laughs> No, I, this looks fun. The art on this game looks pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, the board looks awesome. The pieces are cool. You got these little cool little boats that you get. But can oh, yeah. I pillage? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's back in. <laughs> 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 and you can literally get all the way around to uh, to Rome and try to take Rome. It's worth a ton of points if you can get down there, but it's, it's not easy. Ooh, the pillaging of Rome. Yeah. I'm in. Rome wasn't yeah. pillaged in a day. <laughs> <laughs> no, it might have been. <laughs> Famous <Yeah>. expression. Famous. <laughs> Everybody knows that expression. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least the dozens of people that'll watch this. Too, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, I, I've heard of that one. Didn't know anything about it. Yep, yeah. looks cool. My number six uh, is the highest ranked game on my list, Ooh. but you'll see why it belongs. It's called Imperial. So. What's that? Imperial is almost a 20-year-old game. It's a 2006 release. This is published by Rio Grande Games, big publisher, Ooh, yeah. and designed by Matt Gertz, uh, a very well-known Euro designer. Why this is hidden to me is because um, it's almost a 20-year-old game, and I think if you're getting into the hobby, or even if you've been in the hobby for a little while, you've heard of this game, you just don't know why would I go back and play uh, an 18 year old game uh, because this is one of the greatest games I've ever played. It looks like it's a war game because you're building up troops and then you're moving troops out and then you're trying to control territories, but you're using a rondelle to select your actions. And then there's that sneaky little tax, tax action. What are you going to do with a tax action? Tax. Well, naturally you're going to tax and you're going to collect money off of the territories you control. Works. But the That's more troops you have out, the less tax you collect because you got to pay taxes on your troops. I mean, 80 so a of strategy our is, is you send troops out to control territories, but them. you try to get them killed <laughs> so you don't play as, pay as high of taxes. Wow. wow. Then on top of it, there is another action on the rondelle uh, that is purchasing stock. This is how you win the game. Uh, you, everybody's going to start being the majority holder of a country, and that's the country that you're controlling. Except that if somebody buys a high stock of the country you control, and they now control more stock than you do, they now control that country, and you don't control that country anymore. So when you're buying stock, maybe you're looking at it and you're going, 
Uh, I'm doing pretty well. I, I feel like I got a lot of territories controlled. I'm getting a lot of money out of my tax action. Maybe I'll just buy a ton of stock in the country I already, I already control, like Russia. Or you go, man, I've really kind of mismanaged my country here, but you know, Britain over there is doing pretty well. Let me buy a bunch of his stock. Uh, and so you're kind of forecasting who you think is actually doing the best of the game. And that's the stocks that you're buying. And the fact that being majority leader means you can suddenly control that country. It's just really good. And then at the end of the game, that tax action is also going to give you more points or it's more of a, it's a modifier for points. The higher taxes you can collect, it becomes a point modifier. Then all of your stocks are modified by that tax point modifier. It's just fantastic. I, I just don't really know of a game that does what this does. It's also one of my favorite designers, Matt Gertz, who designed Concordia. And I think Concordia is like a perfect game to me. It, it just, it excels at everything it does and it's very easy to teach and learn. And I feel like this one is too and it just gets overshadowed by Concordia. Uh, they reprinted it in 09 and they called it Imperial 2030. They changed a couple things. You can still get both of these games and, and I just feel like it's just really, really good. And nobody really talks about this game because it's old now. It's not the best looking. Uh, in fact, the original version box art is not good. It's bad, I would even argue. Uh, That's why the people that play that go to Concordia. <laughs> also doesn't have great box art. Uh, unfortunately, Rio Grande is not really known for having it's, the best true. box art. It's true. But you can still get this game, and I can assure you it is fantastic. And you, by the time you play it, you may not have played anything else that's like it. So I thought it deserved to be on here. That sounds unique that you can basically change ownership of the country. It's like, man, you're doing really good. I'm gonna say I want I want to control them now. You can control multiple. Even. Yeah, yeah, it's possible to control two or three countries in one I game. I can't. I can't tell if this sounds amazing or miserable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like stuck in this weird middle ground here. It's the stock buying. You're right. Isn't I'll it? say like when, when I start hearing like. <laughs> stock buying and market manipulation i'm like ugh, i'm out but like also if it's done right like i talk about uh there's a video game called uh dune what's it called dune something uh the rts one oh i'm completely blanking oh, yeah, right yeah, now yeah, yeah. um but a big dune part of that the game one. is buying the stocks and, and trying to have majority stocks and certain things and everything like that and, and donating your spice to be able to get money and everything like that so if it's done right it can be fascinating so yeah you're explaining it i'm just like man this sounds really cool like <laughs> like a like risk but from like the business perspective yeah like the company good way to look at it you know yeah. during that as you're describing it, I'm like, this sounds more like hostile corporate takeover, the board game. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Just instead, exactly. of, instead of Britain, uh, that's AT and T or mm. whatever. Right. I mean, Lockheed Martin. Yeah, <laughs> Boeing. You, it, it, it's funny because it doesn't really feel like a stock game because it doesn't have any market manipulation in it. You, you're not like, okay, if I sell them, then it tanks this stock, or if I buy it, it raises this stock. There's none of that. It's literally just a marker that shows the. It's the. It's a point modifier, and it determines what country you control. But there's really no market to manipulate. So I don't consider it a stock market game but yeah just the way those the the control changes uh through stock buying is just very very cool uh okay my number six mm -hmm. uh i had an intro for this and i forgot it it's it's mask of the red death oh yeah oh, awesome okay. I, why didn't I put this one on my list? I mean, it's oh my God, so underrated. It's insane. Oh, you look at games from the 90s. I can't wait <laughs> for you to talk about the numbers on this. It's insanely underrated. Oh, really? uh, so Mask of the Red Death, I'll start by saying a couple things. So first of all, this was number one on my underrated list. It just so happens that the numbers also have it high on this list as well. Um, and this is out of print, but we do know someone that found it for a reasonable price yep. recently online, so it's not impossible. I found a basic um, version for super cheap, and Tim oh. found a Kickstarter one for relatively cheap right yeah. uh so first of all some numbers right this is ranked 7005 uh right now uh that's not as bad as i would have thought for how unknown it is but it is obviously not great uh it has a average of 6.6 .6. it's you know not bad i would definitely give it a higher rating oh, yeah. than that and it has uh as you've noticed my numbers are getting lower this has 322 votes again not wow. as bad as i thought it was gonna be but, but still. low for mm -hmm. sure 
Uh, Mask of the Red Death is a, uh, it's obviously based on the, uh, Edgar Allan Poe, whatever. Short story. Um, yep, uh, exactly. I was gonna say, uh, poem, and then Spencer was gonna yell at me, so I instead <laughs> said whatever, and I let him <laughs> fill in the blank. Uh, so in this game, uh, it, it, it has two modes. It has 80% of the game, I'd even say higher, it has like 90% of the game, and then it has the ending 10%. And the, the beginning, the 90% of the game, is you taking actions to look at each other's uh, cards in your hand, to take cards, and to look at this timetable thing that's out that says like, 11, 11, 30, 12, it has all these time things. Because basically you're setting everything up, everything is a deduction thing for the end of the game, to where at the end of the game, uh, death is gonna show up, and death is going to have a set pattern according to that little timetable I have where depending on what time it is He's gonna be in a certain room and if you are ever in the same room as death you die and you are trying to not die And the end of the game is all programmed. So the beginning of the game you're doing all this stuff It's whatever then Before the clock strikes midnight you have to say you have to program your entire thing. You're gonna say, okay, at 10, I'm gonna be in this room. At 10.30, I'm gonna be in this room. At 11, I'm gonna be in this room. And the rooms you're in have to be adjacent to each other. You can't just teleport around. Death can, but you can't. You have to slowly walk in, you know, uh, adjacent uh, rooms. Pie slices, oh. I guess. It's like a pie circle slices. of yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. pie slices. Um, and so you have to program your turn. And that that is what you're doing then. And then it says 10, death, move, everyone moves, death teleports. Oh. 10.30, everyone moves, death teleports. <sighs> and you're just trying to make sure that you have gathered enough information throughout the game to never be in the same room as death at the end. And doesn't he kill a room off entirely? You can't go into that room anymore once he's been in it? Or was there... I don't think I... so. It's been a while since I, I I've only played twice, but I don't think he kills off a room. I think you can still go into it after okay. that. Otherwise, it seems like it'd be impossible. <laughs> oh, I remember there, like there was a, once I played, and I was like, I have to get over there. I'm not certain I can physically do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, I don't know. Spencer, seems like you want to maybe add some stuff. But yeah, it's, it's just a very, very good story. Stupidly simple game. I mean, th th through the game, it feels like you're not really doing anything. You're just gathering information, and it's all to set up this heart-pounding ending that is one of the most stand-up intense moments I've ever had in a game, where you just see everyone going like, okay, well, I moved here. I, I, or like someone will be like, I have everything planned, except 11. I don't know where he's gonna be at 11. So I really hope it's not in the only room I can stand in at 11. You know, like it's just, uh, it's so good, uh, fantastic game. Yeah, and the theme on that one is so strong, especially if you've read the short story. There are all these- Oh, it's a short story. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not a poem. <laughs> <laughs> There's all these little homages to the short story uh, that I, if you are a fan, is just delicious. I love that part. Also, the tower was pretty cool. Uh, right, the there's tower. there's a there's clock, like a clock tower clock that keeps tower, track yeah. of the mm -hmm. rounds. I finally got to play this last year, and I really like how you can't gather 100% of the right. information in this game. So there's a little bit of guessing in that final right. round. You're like, okay, I feel pretty confident, but where he's going to be at 10, 10, 30, and 11? It's after 11, I'm not so sure. Right, and it's... And that helps with the fact that, like I said, you have to move adjacent when you're in that final part of the round. So if you know where you have to be at 10 and you know where you have to be at 11, you know, then, or, you know, 1130, then you have those two rounds of being like, okay, I don't know where I need to be during those rounds, but I know that by 1130, I need to be here. So you don't have that many options, really. Like, you, you just kind of like... Make it really it's happen. like, do I go here, then here, then here, or here, then here, then here? And so it, it makes the thought not overwhelming at the end because you have a path you want to take. You're just not sure which one you should be in at which, you know, increment of time. Um, but yeah, the man, just just really fun. It's also one of my favorite uh, Edgar Allan Poe stories. Kind of learning where not to it's be. Apropos. And right, then the process of elimination. It, yeah. the, the deduction feels really good in yeah. this one. Okay, my number six is the oldest one that I have, and the reason I have it on here is because although it is this freaking old, it is still number 3000. It's called Nuclear War from 1965. Wow. Whoa. But there's Nuclear War, and then that. there's... It's before me. It's before me. I mean, <laughs> Nuclear Proliferation and Nuclear Escalation, and they made another one called Weapons of Mass Destruction, which I have not played. And they all can be played together. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is everyone uh, is playing a country, and you have these population cards that you're going to randomly draw, so no one really knows exactly what your population is going to be. Uh, and you start off kind of in a Cold War, so you have in front of you this... Uh, 
a table, you're you're moving your cards face down along this table every turn, and then on the end of the table, they turn face up and something can happen. But you also have this section up here that's like a deterrent. There's two places you can put cards from your hand and just face up and be like, you really wanna do that? I've got a nuke. And then you, you can put it in your in your uh, your lineup, or you can put it back in your hand. You can be bluffing. Uh, there's propaganda. So before a nuclear war breaks out, you're trying to steal people's uh, population using propaganda. Uh, all these just fun little things. And then when war actually breaks out, someone actually launches the first missile and everything goes you know sky high. Mm -hmm. That's when things get crazy, and, and you're just trying to get larger and larger warheads. You have to get a missile and a warhead to deliver them, and all these different things. Um, and then there's nuclear proliferation where you're adding to it space bases. And you know, it's peaceful space bases, but it's it's a whole nother aspect of things that you can do to just screw over your opponent. Hmm. Um, and then in, prolif in uh, proliferation, the, that one's escalation, and proliferation is um, you have like asymmetric powers. So every country has their own ability to, um, to hmm. pump things up. I, I really like this game. It was a lot of fun when I was playing it as a kid and people do still play it. It's still relatively highly rated. There's a lot of just stress of looking at someone going, is he actually gonna play that card? Does he have a way to deliver that warhead? And, you know, bluffing and things like that. It's Can you still find this game? Is it hard to find? I'm not certain. It w was relatively easy to find on BGG. Yeah. Okay. I, I would I would be surprised if it was hard to find, yeah. especially since they keep making, making newer versions of it. it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how Weapons of Mass Destruction works. That's the only one I haven't played. Um, but that is my number six. I don't know that one at all. Yeah. Uh, that's going nice. to take us down to number five. Okay. But before we get into number five, let's have a listen to our sponsor. This episode of the Board Game Rundown is sponsored by Weathervane Games, creators of Rahode, Age of Prophecy an adventure dungeon crawl for one to four players in a fresh fantasy world. Launching on Kickstarter, October of 2024. Vrahod Age of Prophecy is the initial game leading into the huge four game series to follow. Weathervane Games is working on nine products, including the Vrahod four game series and four sets for their proprietary Harbinger 3D terrain system with which it is compatible. To learn more, check out vrahod.com. That's V-R-A-H-O-D-E.com. All right. Wow, that was a great ad by our sponsor, right, guys? Phenomenal. You still say that like you don't know what it is, <laughs> and we've had, the same, we've had the same ad break for weeks, so... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those health counters are really something. Very cool, though, right? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Uh, anyways, back into number five. Uh, so this one also qualifies for Dan's list at Ooh. poultry 82 ratings. Oh, wow. But it is a 7.7, 7 7 and it's uh, from 2016, so it's a little older. Into the Echo side. We do talk oh. about this game quite a bit. Uh, nice. It's the ICP deck builder. Whoop, whoop. Uh, and so if you love ICP, you will love this deck builder. If you like deck builders, you'll like this game regardless it's that it's ICP. It's really good. It's done really well. Uh, surprisingly, like, I, I wanted to play it just because I'm an ICP pan, fan from back in the day. Uh, but I played it like, wow, this is actually a really good game. So I want to play just because how much you guys hype it up. It's, yeah, I still haven't had a chance. It's, it's my favorite pure deck builder. Yeah, it's yeah, really it is pure deck builder. Oh my god, it's a nine. The uh, the second Oracle of the Three Rings okay. 9.0. Yeah, but good luck finding that. Oh. The expansions are super expensive and hard to find. The game can be a little hard to find. You can find it on secondary market. Um, also, if you go to the Psychopathic Records, um, yeah, they website, that's what they they do prints it. every once in a while. Correct, right? they do print it. Yeah, they'll be out of stock for a few months, but they'll do another reprint and they'll bring it back so just keep an eye on that and you can always find it there for the normal msrp uh, and i have to pay a bunch secondary market but it's a great pure deck builder and uh like i said if you if you do like icp it's got some great flavor in there for you so and even if you don't like it like it's got like guar vanilla ice is in there right. and some other people here's like what and they're like <laughs> but yeah it's yeah it's good. That it doesn't game. matter <laughs> if you like icp or not it's a fun game it's a fun game it's a good deck building game. yeah so that's it good one thanks all right, my number five is Vigilante. Mm. Oh, uh, so Vigilante was one that we got to review on the channel uh, slightly before I started uh, contributing content with the guys here. And uh, I didn't get to play it until last year at Origins. 
And so what this game is, is you're basically, it's a hand management. I dare to say deck building, but it's not your traditional deck building, put cards in your discard, reshuffle. It's not like that. Um, but it's a hand management game. You are recruiting heroes to assemble like a hero squad, and then you're fighting villains out onto the main board. Except that there's a good player, and then there can be a bad player, and then there can be neutral players. And so you don't actually know because there's hidden tr hidden, hidden roles, roles. Identities, not hidden trader, yeah. hidden roles, hidden identities. So you don't really know who's actually working with right. you. What's their end game? Or against yeah. you. Yeah. You don't know what their victory condition in. Yeah, is. I like how you discover is you have those four things face down, and whenever you have two of them, is one you are, but can look at one at a time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so slowly people are learning more information about you as the game goes on. And so when I played this game, I got to be the bounty hunter, which is one of the neutral factions. And my goal was to wipe out the strongest hero on one of the other players' boards. And very early in the game, I didn't really hide the fact that I was not a good player. And so the other guys are teaming up on me. They're just actively trying to make this game very difficult for me. And so what was really funny was that eventually one guy decided he was gonna keep coming after me. And, t and, and so I'm looking and I'm like, oh, he's got the highest character that's out there so i'm going to be attacking him eventually except he was really strong so i had to build up a lot of strong attack cards to even do it right as i was ready to do it the guy on the other side of me recruited an even stronger character so i did this like faint where i'm like you know james i remember their names james and kevin is who i was playing against I'm like james you've been coming after me all game long and that's why I'm going after Kevin's <laughs> highest character. Uh, it just gave me a story that I still enjoy telling about these guys just coming after me all game. And then one guy keeps beating me up. And then I went after the other guy. And we actually all won that game. We all completed our victory condition. But I have a story to tell. The mechanics were fun. Uh, and this game is ranked 13,608. Uh, but only 39 ratings? Yeah, and it's because it was self-published by Reed Mascala, the designer, as Paranoia Rising Games. And so I think that is probably a factor. Um, this game, you can still get it. Uh, he's still working on an expansion for it, actually. And it's just really good. So if you have an opportunity to play or buy this game, I highly recommend it. Yeah. Some yep. tech building. And I love the little tableau you build. And like in how, when the monsters pop up, yeah, the bad guys, they attack certain sectors of yeah. your tableau. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is a good one. We've covered it extensively on our channel if you mm -hmm. want to check it out. It, this, uh, I looked at this. This would have been an honorable mention for me. I just didn't write any honorable mentions down, but this for sure would have been an honorable mention. It was fresh in my head because I played it last year so I right. had to get I almost under. played with you I don't know if you That's remember right. I was sitting yeah. at the table for a while and something happened and it was like postponing our gameplay and I was like I gotta go do something else and so I, I wound up leaving but yeah I was gonna play too yeah uh, I remember we we played a pre-production copy and then when we got to play the production copy and I was like oh they've added these extra neutral roles and I was like oh this makes it so much better mm -hmm. I don't even want to play as a good guy or bad guy I, I, know, want neutral roles. I know they also <laughs> added some new market manipulation since I last played it because my only issue was the game with I felt I felt it was kind of hard oh, to clear right. the market and they they fixed, fixed that uh, just just cool stuff I like that there are two decks um, mm -hmm. and it was like the city and the yeah ages. one of them uh, the the cards have a high value which is what you use to buy cards right the other one their abilities are stronger but their value is low right and you can only access that one once you something happens you have to yeah, get you have to so completed many. some sort of objective like yeah have somebody arrested or, or something yeah has happened. something it happened yeah yeah so I, I like that. I like that then there's a lot of different neutral roles in there too that all yeah. have like a very thematic in-game trigger too yeah. I played once and my role was to pick another player and be his role mm. oh nice. <laughs> nice yeah there's a lot of them I didn't get to see that dramatically changed the play style Okay, my number five is kind of similar to yours. It's a smaller uh, company that we've covered on the show extensively, and it's, it's uh, I think, the one that made... It's also the newest, I believe, game on my list. You guys can fact-check me on that. But uh, that is Cult of the Deep. Ooh. Nice. Nice. Uh, this is 12,064 ranked right now with only 116 votes. And, guys, it's just a great... Uh, hidden roll uh, game. Yeah. It's 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 just really really fun. If you if you know Bang or Bang the Dice game, mm -hmm. this is just a 
you know, one step forward from that, basically. Obviously, you're going to pick the one whose theme you enjoy more. If you love Westerns and hate Lovecraftian, I'm not going to recommend Cult of the Deep, even though I do think it is a slightly better game. Better game. I mean, it's it's very similar to Bang the Dice game with some deeper mechanics, and it's it's just newer. You know, I'm not going to cool crap thing. on Bang the Dice game. It's 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 a great game. It's just the Cult of the Deep has had quite a few more years to get that design underway, and they went with a slightly more deeper central area of the board where you have uh, rituals that are happening that are impacting everything in play to where uh, Bang just has the dice mechanic and the I don't know who to shoot mechanic, which again makes Bang kind of a faster and more kind of chaotic fun game to Cult of the Deep, while it still has that, is a bit more thinking. You've got to really look at these rituals and see, okay, when this procs, who is this going to affect and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I keep just saying Bang, and if you don't know that, basically it's a Yahtzee style dice game where you're rolling dice, everyone has a secret roll, and your each team has a objective they're trying to accomplish. I'm going to use the Bang terms because I don't know the cult terms off the top of my head to where I do know the bang terms. So the renegade needs to be the last person alive. Uh, if you guys know the terms in cult, you can feel free to say these. Uh, <laughs> it's like the heretic, the cultist, yeah, right. and the um, assassin. Okay, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, I couldn't think of what the sheriff was called in this. High priest. Okay, the high priest. Thank you. So there's a high priest that everyone knows. Uh, the high priest is going to have some people on their, their team, side. and then there's going to be the cultist, whose goal is just to kill the high priest, they and then there's the going priest. to be the assassin, I assume, is like the... Uh, whatever it's called, the Renegade. They need to be the last person alive. And so you it's just the get- The Heretic. Uh, the Heretic. And so you just get this really interesting uh, interplay between the roles because let's say the, so the Heretic needs to be the last person alive, right? Well, then they can't let the Sheriff die first because the second the Sheriff dies, the cultists instantly win. So the Heretic is gonna be kind of playing like the deputy, whatever that is, right? They're gonna be playing like a good character for most of the game until the cultists are dead. And then they're gonna go, Et tu brute, <laughs> and uh, and kind of and kind of come out of nowhere, and so it's just a really fun hidden roll, fast paced Yahtzee mechanic mm -hmm. game. Uh, okay. I recommend both, honestly. I think they both do different things. Also, with Bang being older, it has. Um, expansions and stuff really already that drastically change the game to where cult hasn't really gotten there yet. Yeah. Um, but I recommend both. They're very fun. Yeah, this is one where you were you have like different powers or something in the middle that everyone's working. Yeah, the rituals. The rituals. The rituals. Yeah. And then as you complete yeah. them, you gain them. And some of them were crazy. Like you can summon a Kraken and just mm -hmm. crazy things, the extra die. Yeah, yeah, those were the what I thought really made this game shine. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Small publisher, BA Games, yep. great people. Yep. yep. Fantastic people. Yeah, dual layered mats. <laughs> Not even dual layered for Cult of the Deep. They're, it was they're cutouts. Yeah, they're cutouts. Yeah, it's yeah. incredible. Your table is your second layer. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty cool. yeah, this was another one. I think you guys covered it like right before I got on the channel. Yeah, it was right, right around that timeline. No, we knew you. We just want to include you. <laughs> Checks out. <laughs> okay, so my number five. Um, it is both an old and a new game. It's called Cosmic Encounter. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. It originally came out in 77, but the most recent version came out in 2020 wow. or 2021. There's been so many different versions. They keep re-releasing it and adding new things to it. The basic idea. Great year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we're as old as Bob. Oh, Star Wars. I see why. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, oh. that's right. See? Great year. I thought we were talking about <laughs> Yeah, so the basic idea is uh, everyone is going to pick uh, a solar system, and in some of the versions, you have asymmetric solar systems that have different abilities on all of the planets, or like a gas giant, which is just one big planet. Uh, they're going to pick some kind of alien race, and that alien race is going to have really different and unique abilities, and sometimes more than one. Um, and then your goal is to get five colonies out on other people's things, and you use this little cone-shaped warp thing, and you go, I'm going to attack this planet, and hey, anyone want to join me? And so they'll join on the little ring outside of it, and then this, the defender, and if uh, he gets bonuses if he gets to defend himself, um, it's playing cards to do this, but then the abilities go off, and all sorts of just shenanigans mm -hmm. all at the same time. Uh, there are flare cards you can get that gives uh, kind of like a special random power as well, so not only do you have your asymmetric ability here, you have asymmetric ability and your uh, alien thing, and now you have a flare card that also does an ability. Uh, it is So is crazy. this the game where people complain that some of the factions are way oh, balanced? Oh, way, <laughs> way out of balance. It's purposely done, I okay, think. Okay. This game has 
probably the most asymmetric factions of any game ever made. Oh my god, yeah. Um, like Twilight Imperium it probably comes close with the expansion stuff, but Cosmic Encounter, you just have a giant pile of factions Huge. all play completely differently like 80 and every single one ridiculous. broken wow. the game, breaks the game. Yeah. Uh, there was one version Broken's. I played where you get to take, take two and their powers both go off and I happened to pick one called the Virus which mm. multiplied instead of added things together and then another one which let me add more things to it. And so I was adding these things and they became a multiplier and I just took over like crazy. So the counterbalance. So totally not balanced, but fun as hell. The <laughs> counterbalance to the game not being balanced at all um, is actually my negative to the game is that it's a game that every player can win every time. The, as long as the players disagree, hey, let's just all win. Everyone just wins. There's no winner at the end. It's just whoever the players let win, so we can just all agree that everyone wins. And so, really, it's everyone wins except whoever you don't let win. Like well, it's, it's just it's a game. Like I would never get to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you, know, you get five colonies, but then other people can join you, and so at the same time they can get colonies down there. Um, and I remember my sister once had one power that was ambiguous, and it said you can whine, and if you whine, they have to do what you want. And she was like, I want another colony. I'm like, that's a little unfair, child. <laughs> <laughs> but fine. <laughs> but fine. <laughs> um, uh, but they keep coming out with new versions. There's a, a dual version or a dice version. Um, and they have one, the most recent one is called a dual. Uh, there's an incursion. Which some, and that one's uh, pretty highly rated. Uh, there's alliance. There's just so many aspects to this oh, game that keep too. adding more things and making it crazier and crazier. Hmm. I will say for myself, Spencer, don't mean this in a negative at all, and I mean that full-heartedly. <laughs> no, no, well, I don't love the game, but that's just because that weird ambiguous ending thing. I wish there was more rules for that. Um, this pushes my envelope of Hidden Gem. I feel like Cosmic <laughs> Encounter is one of the most famous games ever made, um, but hey, you know, I no one in Board Game Rundown had played it until a couple years ago where I brought, you might have before we started the channel, I guess, but like uh, Tim, Bob, none of them had played it, and then I eventually uh, told Tim to borrow it from someone. I think I was like, Tim, you're gonna love this game. This yeah, is like, I gonna was be pushing your favorite it as well. Game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he, he, Tim, wound up borrowing it, and he loves it and everything. And again, I don't like hate the game. It's just purposely ambiguous at the end. It's just like, hey, if if you let me on your planet, I'll let you on mine, and we'll both win. <laughs> it's, 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 no, I, it's about having fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, for sure. I love this game because it, it has negotiation in it, and yeah. you can legitimately agree to negotiate with someone and then backstab Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Uh, and I just I really Once. like that in games. <laughs> <laughs> and Bob's like, oh, no one ever trusts me. Yeah. <laughs> We've caught on, Bob. It, it was a, it was a favorite of mine years ago. Mm -hmm. I haven't played it in a long time, but it's still I, I I love it. I just love the stories I'm able to tell when I'm done playing a game of Cosmic Encounter. For sure. Yep. And I just wanted to point out because Cosmic Encounter Duel 2020 only has 800 ratings mm -hmm. on it, so. Some of it is not as well known, some of it is, so check out all of it. Yeah, I think part of that, not to go too into it, I think part of that is because I believe, you know, grain of salt here, I believe when Duel came out, Dice Tower crapped on it. Mm. And so that's gonna hurt people checking a game out when one of the biggest influencers out there, you know, craps on a game. So yeah. that's just gonna happen. It's unfortunate. Yep. I struggle to see how it would work as a two-player game, but I also- You both win. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so it's just normal okay. cosmic okay. encounters. Then. <laughs> 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 okay. Again? I hate you guys. Just pass my stats. Man, I hate I won you guys. 20 games yesterday. <laughs> uh, all right. So that's going to take us down to. You're done, right? Yeah. Number four. Number four. four. Uh, so number four, people know I love Mind Clash games, right? Uh, David Turksey, name mm -hmm. you I've dropped once or twice. You're not naming anything unknown from those two names. What's going on? Uh, I am, because this game only has 571 rankings. Uh, Venice. Really? Yeah. And so it's funny, because when I was interviewing them, and I, uh, David, and I brought up Venice, he was surprised that that was the game of his that I brought up, but I love it. It's like an engine builder. Um, you're in Venice. You've got these cool little, I know, right? Uh, boats, which is the wrong gondolas. Uh, <laughs> and uh, oh, you're yeah. you're going around uh, the little pathways, the, the streets, because they're made of water. 
Bar. That's what you do. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what, what city is this again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and as you go past your, as you go past these buildings, if you have workers on them, you can activate those buildings and gain these resources. And you're doing contract fulfillment, but you're also trying to like uh, put more and more workers on these buildings. You can stop at buildings and like increase your workers' ability on there, so you get more stuff when you activate those buildings. Uh, and my biggest complaint, a lot of people's biggest complaint they had about this was the board was so small. Yes, it was very compact, and your gondolas are big. So if you have like two or three boats at the same location, it's, it, it's jam-packed. And then like the workers would have to go on the, because uh, the buildings are all modular, but you would always have to put your workers on top of the building. So you're constantly moving them out of the way to see what uh, is on them, uh, on the building tiles. But they redid the board and uh, with their Da Vinci expansion. And now there's plenty of room. There's a parking spot for every boat at every location. Uh, there's a spot around the buildings now for the workers to go so you're not actually on that. And they fixed everything that was wrong with that board. And it's just a fantastic, like, uh, just a fantastic game. Like, there's intrigue. And so uh, you, you go by other people's boats, you have to pay uh, resources or you gain intrigue. And if you have too much intrigue, whoever has the most at the end cannot win. Like, you just, you're out. And so, because it's very suspicious those two boats keep crossing paths very throughout sus. the night. It's very sus. And so you got to be careful of that and watch out for that. And no, it's, but it's a fantastic game. Um, kind of like an engine builder. Uh, and, and I love it. I think more people should play it. Uh, it was ranked, where did it go? 5,489. So it's pretty high up there. And like I said, only 500 and some ratings. So yeah, not many people I, know about this game. And I enjoyed this one. Mm -hmm. I just want to know, why are people in Venice so nosy? Like, what? <laughs> Mind your own business. Here, take, take my goods. <laughs> Thank you. I'm getting out of Venice now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nothing this suspicious one. here. <laughs> Isn't this the one where uh, if you're going certain routes, you actually have to pay money to do it? Yeah, as you go past certain spots, you have to pay money, which keeps you from just going yeah. around the whole yeah. board the whole time and, and activating everything. And then there are bridges you can put across it's yes, where you're basically where getting taxes, like you're going under my bridge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pay up. Yeah, yeah. So it's. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like. I remember doing that and like setting up a whole bunch of taxes in one area so mm -hmm. that people just wouldn't go that yeah, way. Yeah, we did not go that way. Got Spencer's side of town, and he like you know got to charge you all the time. So we're gonna go this way. suspicious happening way. here. He's a yeah. Nancy. yeah, this is like gatekeeping the board game. <laughs> uh, I haven't played it. This was on your underrated. Oh, oh top was it? 10, so I yeah. should have. It's good. Oh, it was good. I like it. It was a very fun game. All right, my number four is Gift of Tulips. Uh, so Gift of Tulips is from a small publisher called Talked Weird Giraffe Games. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I've been talking about like it a lot on our live stream here lately because uh, I had heard nothing about this game. And I finally played it uh, a couple months ago and was really impressed with how unique this game is. Uh, so essentially you are building a bouquet of tulips. Uh, there's um, four different suits or colors of tulips. And where this game's unique is, okay, so you've got the community cards in the middle and they're gonna determine how many points each set is worth. So as an action, you can play cards in front of you. Those are the cards that are gonna score points. You can add cards to that middle section to manipulate the points, but you can also gift cards to other players. And where this is unique is, is that if you gift a player a card from a suit that's in first or second, you get points because you gifted a valuable card. I've just never seen a game do that mechanic before. If you gift somebody a card that's in like third or fourth place, well, that's a crafty gift. You get nothing for gifting that card. Uh, so it's interesting. There's this push and pull of, well, maybe I want to go with the gifting strategy, which is legitimate. I saw somebody score a ton of points by gifting useful cards and then trying to manipulate the center bouquet to make the cards that um, aren't valuable more valuable so, so that the they were giving useless. away the cards that are valuable now but aren't by the time the game's over. I just really, really enjoyed this one a lot. And I had never heard of it. It's from a small publisher. Is it a weirdo giraffe? Weird giraffe oh, weird games. Giraffe. I know. When I was spelling out weird giraffe, I put the e at the end of weird oh. and at the end of giraffe for whatever reason. <laughs> oh, so Bob's like, is that giraffe? <laughs> uh, ranked four thousand eight seventy eight. Uh, I just for you know of a, a small box, just a deck of cards, very easy to teach and get to the table. Thoroughly enjoyed it, and I've played nothing like it. And I really, really like the art on it. it the tulip drawings are very, very pretty. Uh, so if you want to try a unique small box game, I, I definitely recommend Gift of Tulips. Uh, my number four, first of all, we have finally hit the less than 100 vote 
uh, votes category for me. Wow. The next four will all have less than 100. Uh, and these are all four games I talk about constantly. So honestly, it's really sad to know that they have that few yeah. votes. And so I'm just going to keep talking about them until you guys go and rate them. Okay? I'm going to rate this one right now. Right, I'm, starting, doing right now. I'm doing it right now, Dan. I'm sorry. Starting <laughs> with Wolves of Mercia. Oh uh, my yes. god, how is that not yes. highly rated? This, first of all, it's is so only awesome. ranked 15,000. What? 697. Yeah. What? Foolish. <laughs> the um, it only has 86 votes. And it uh, is an average of 6.7, which uh, it's okay. It should be higher than that, but hey, at least it's that high for you know how few people have freaking rated it. Um, but Wolves of Mercia is uh, basically the best version of Werewolf that you can get. Now mm -hmm. it's not my favorite social deduction game, but it's my favorite like light social deduction game, right? Like if you're not playing a giant blood on the clock tower type of game, Wolves of Mercia plays in like 45 minutes. And the only reason it even takes that long is because the way this game is designed is every night, every role has to be mentioned because the whole part of the point of the game is you don't know which roles are in the game. So it has to go through every role through the night saying lovers and lonely heart, wake up even if you're not playing with lovers and lonely heart, right? Um, so like literally if you just count out all that, <laughs> game would be 20, way faster yeah. uh also five rounds max um plays into that and that's because at the end of the fifth round the werewolf automatically wins if no one else won and that is the interesting thing about this game when compared to like werewolf and mafia and stuff like that is every single player not only has an asymmetric ability unless you're part of the cultists in which case they'll be a small team together and their own win condition if you're the hierophant you have your own win condition if you're the lovers and lonely heart you have your own win condition the cultist the werewolf the uh uh what's it called the fugitive the uh, arsonist all have your own win condition in this game and there's like i don't even know 20 some roles or something obviously again taking cultist into account um and everyone has a day and a night role in this game, which is another really fun, unique thing. So at night, I'm the werewolf and I'm killing people. But during the day, I'm the jailer, which means I get to pick someone and shut off their ability for the day or for the night because they're in jail overnight, right? Everyone has a super powerful stuff. There are very few abilities in the game that I think are not fun to play for the majority of people. Um, there, There's one that's literally just like, if you get chosen by the, like the werewolf can't cho choose you or something at night, so you're just safe from the werewolf. That's a little boring for a day ability or, or something, you know? But there's just a lot of character interaction, a lot of really fun stand-up moments. Man, I remember one game, oh, Tim's not gonna like me telling this story again. <laughs> I remember one game, I had Tim thinking I was on his team as a cultist the entire game, and I was actually I the Hierophant. And the Hierophant's ability is if the cultists win, you win instead. Uh, and I had Tim thinking I was on his team, the not on his team, but like, not against him, because obviously the cultists would know each other. They open their eyes together. Um, but I, I, I had Tim thinking I was like helping him out the whole game. And at the end of the game, uh, Tim was so excited that he won because he's on the cultists. And he was like, yes. I was like, oh, that's awesome, Tim. I'm the higher fan. That means if you win, I win. And he high fived me. And I said, instead. And he went, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, and it killed him. It was one of the. It was. It was your delay, yeah. letting him have Instead. celebration, <laughs> and then cutting him down. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that game. It was oh. fun. Yeah. Four game rundown. We mistreat our friends, <laughs> um, but uh, it's just one of the most uh, funny moments I've ever had. So, Wolves of Mercia, guys, if you like hidden trader, you know, deduction, that kind of game, plays in forty-five minutes. Fascinating character roles. Beautiful tarot cards mm. with uh, oh, with yeah, fantastic art. Art's mm. great. This game is so underrated it, it is it's it's Criminal. number four on my list yeah, yeah you forgot um it also doesn't exactly have player elimination because when right. you're eliminated you get a ghost roll and those do different things so you're mm -hmm. still in the game i remember i was playing once uh my job i could uh assassinate someone the wolf uh, uh a hunter or something. Yeah, yeah. And but he, he killed me early on, but then my ghost roll was I get to come back in the last round. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back, yeah, it's, it's technically only the first four people that die take on a ghost roll, and all the ghosts also have their own win conditions. Um, but by the time the fourth person dies, you're at least halfway you're pretty through the close. game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know. And I have never seen this game go all five nights with the werewolf winning also, which might mean the werewolf is underpowered. I don't know, but... Uh, so, so if I was hearing you correctly, you're saying the day roll 
Ah. Different than the night roll. Ah. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Don't sue us. Master of karate and friendship for everyone. For everyone. Um, you gotta love when something is so famous that you just have to go. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> everyone knows to go. Ah. <laughs> Return. I think they'd be proud that we included it. Um, yeah, I got to play this once, and um, this is a small box, and so you might Very be small. questioning how much depth there is to this game. I played plenty of social deduction games, and I just immediately felt like I need to play it again to see the relationships and roles and how to bluff. Uh, so there's a lot more depth in this game than it appears based on the side of the bo size of the box. It's one of my preferred social deduction mm -hmm. games. Yeah, Bob does not love that style of game. I uh, I'll also say a slight plug because we say it all the time. Why not? If you do own this game, one of the nice things about it is because the night roll is always the same. You don't need a moderator if you just have a recording of the night roll. So on our Facebook, some where you like go to our Facebook and hit files or something and you we can like have files that are available like photos and stuff we have a recording of the full moderation that you can download and you can just play that when you're playing so that you don't have to have someone As sit out because that's yeah, one of the no, sucky things like in eyes. werewolf is you have to have someone just say everyone close your eyes this person died you know instead everyone gets to play and that also makes getting the player count easier you know yep. anyway wolves of Mercia. Cool. very good choice yep all right, uh, my number four is from 2007. Oh. It is called Biblios. Oh, have you played this one? I love this game. I love this game too. Not highly read enough. Um, this is essentially you are all working as monks in a scriptorium, and the bishop is going to be visiting all your different scriptorium. Scriptoria? Scriptoria. Yeah. Uh, and so. You're trying to get the best library possible. And there's five different categories. Three of them are like different kinds of tomes. And then one of them is like different kinds of monks and, and ink or parchment or something. And they all start at the same number of points. I think it's three points. Uh, there's two phases in the game. The first phase is the gift phase, where you take a number of cards equal to the player's plus one. I get to pick one and that goes into my hand. I get to then put one into the auction pile, and then I spread the others out, and the other players get to pick them. And we go around the entire table getting all of those uh, until that the deck is gone. If you run into a church card, it's like the bishop comes early or the pope says something. It changes the value on some of these dice. So as you're gathering these cards to try to get the best in this category, and I notice, oh, he's been getting a lot of the purple cards. Purple is now worth only two points. And so you're trying to manipulate how many points everything is worth while taking all the good cards yourself. Mm -hmm. And then the second phase is the auction phase. So in the auction phase, you take the auction deck, you shuffle it up, you put the first one up, and then everyone auctions it off. Some of the cards are gold. And so if it's a, gold, if it's a normal card that comes out, everyone's auctioning off different amounts of gold. Of course, it's one, two, or three, so if I want to do it for two, but I only have a three in my hand, I gotta pay three. Uh, and then if it's a gold piece that comes up, because you can still use them later to get the later ones, you're auctioning off numbers of cards in my hand. So I'll give two cards for that one. I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell how serious. <sighs> Like, he was thinking really hard about what he said. <laughs> there's a dice version of it, which I really want to play, and there's an expansion, I think it's called Quills and Parchment or something like that, uh, that I also really want to play. Uh, this game, I liked it so much, the first time I played it, and I went out and I bought it. Wow. Yeah. Um, I love this game. It's one of my favorite fillers. Uh, I got, uh, like, at least 40 plays in on this wow. game. I, yeah. I thoroughly enjoy this one. Uh, one of the mechanics that I just really enjoy in this one is how, okay, if I'm playing a four-player game, I got to draft a card for myself, one for each person, and one for the auction. So I'm drawing five cards, except that I'm going to draw one and look at it and make a decision. Right. This card's no good. All right, let's put a face up for these guys. Let's draw next. Crap, that one's not any good either. Okay, let's put a face up for these guys. Well, that's not bad. It's not what I'm going for. Let's try putting that one in the auction. Okay, this one better be good. And I just love that one at a time decision. Yeah. And it's that risk of reward of is a card I put up face down, face up better than the one I'm going to get stuck with. Mm -hmm. I really, really enjoy that. And I think the auction mechanics work really well. Yeah. 
Um, I thought about making this one an honorable mention. This version is out of print. However, they've reprinted and rethemed it as For the King and Me. Ooh, it's still from Yellow, um, and so it's still available. They made it a five-player game instead of a four-player game, which I know there were BGG five-player house variants that are on there. Now they've officially made the game fit five players, which I always feel like auction games should go up to five anyway. But uh, great pick. I love this game so much. I've only I only played it once. I thought I thought it was really good. I didn't get like as crazy for it as you guys, but I only played it once, so I didn't see all the deep strategies and stuff that you really can get out of it. Um, but yeah, like you said, the the push your luck kind of like God, do I take this just because I don't know if I'm I gonna get anything that. better? Like that yeah. that that is a fantastic version of that. It's amazing how simple that is and how much emotion it can take yeah. for you. Just say, okay, Mike, draw a card. Now you can get rid of that, but you might not get anything better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you're just like, go, oh, my soul. <laughs> oh, but then you have the bidding part where it comes up and you're like, okay, that's a really good card, but I only have seven gold for all the rest of the deck. Right. Oh. <laughs> Or I, I like how the timing of those church cards can oh, be they, so important. Because if you the, get them in the, er, in the early <laughs> game, you really don't know. Like, okay, mm -hmm. I, I really have. All right. Yeah, let you, me just try raising the, the point value of sums I've been collecting. Yeah. And the church cards, you don't get the option of holding on to them. The you moment someone acquires them, them, it gets used. Immediately. Yeah. So and you so have to make that choice right now. You could try to use it early for sets that you're collecting. What gets dangerous is if you put a church card in the auction and it oh, comes out that. towards the end of the game, <laughs> what was not a very valuable card in the early game is suddenly being sold for 12 coins at the end of the game because being add, being able to add mm -hmm. two points to a D6 is a huge swing in points. And so those church cards, I just love the way the value changes depending the on when they come out. Strong and the whole, uh, and I like it's, the art in it. I, I love this the game. The box it's, looks like a book. And it's a it magnetic does. Thing. Magnetic. Uh, I love, I love game. that. This game, so this game shines at something I look for, which is crunch per rule ratio. <laughs> um, this is a thing oh, I yeah, made up. The, 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 C, the CPR. So, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. And it is Everybody how is difficult <laughs> are the decisions compared to the amount of rules that I have to learn? I'm oh, literally just easy. drawing one card and then trying to make a very difficult decision on whether I can dr draw a better card than that. And that simple mechanic is amazing. And it just makes decisions feel impactful and yet difficult. And it's a really simple mechanic. I, that's why I love this game so much. Okay. Well, thank you for your number four. Mike. Yes. Great pick. Great pick. Now I just got to play with you. I, yeah. I, I well haven't played play it with, with you. So. Number All right. three. Yeah. Down to number three. Wow. All right, uh, so uh, my number three is also falls on Dan's list of compatibility with 734 ratings, War Room. Uh, <laughs> it's crunchy, it's World War II, it's intense, it's awesome, right? I mean, it's huge world map. You can play with smaller scenarios where you only use portions of it and whatnot. You have stacks of units between your different types of boats, your different types of lands and uh, air units. Then you put a command uh, uh, marker on top of it, which gives it like a designation like, oh, it's the 101st Infantry or the 13th Airborne. Uh, and then you're going to have hidden movement and you're going to be saying, okay, I want the 101st to go to J6, and you're gonna plan all your moves out, you're gonna bid oil for turn order, uh, and then you're gonna start moving your units. You can pin enemy units down, uh, you can use railroads to trans, you know, to go across like large portions of land. Uh, you can, there's morale, if you lose too many units, then your uh, your country gets mad at you, and they, they stop producing as much stuff, and they keeps like degrading their morale, and more and more penalties keep happening. And it's just a fantastic war game. If you like war games at all, any kind of like Axis and Allies, Risk, anything like that, War Room is amazing. It's it's super intense. It can take a while to play, but they do have a, with the second edition, they released some like um, quick fight, quick battle rules, so you don't have to use the big player board, which I like the player board. If you have time to use it, use it because you really get to designate like, oh, I want these units on attack. I want these units on defense. And that will change like how many dice you get to roll and how many hits they can take, things like that. Um, but it does make the battles take a lot longer. You can use the, the quick battle ones and it will speed the game up quite a bit. Um, and they're not bad. Um, 
But yeah, War Room is just fantastic. It came out in uh, 2019, so it's relatively new-ish, but uh, very few ratings on it. And I know it's um, being a bit more like niche, right? Because there's only like certain people who like that in depth of a, a war and strategy type of game. But it is fantastic. And if you have like, any interest at all in, in those types of games, do yourself a favor. Find somebody who has it, get yourself a play-in, and then get yourself your own copy because you're going to love it. I, I'd love to find someone who has it and get a play-in, Bob. <laughs> okay. You just got to <laughs> pick a non-Saturday to pick play Pick a non-Saturday to play with <laughs> Dan. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, this is older than I thought. I would have guessed 2020 at the earliest. So mm-hmm. that, okay, being older. I, I, I think that the only reason this is so lowly rated or whatever is because... This game looks intimidating yes. to even war gamers. I yeah, feel it, like it like people does. see this game and it's just like, like jeez, <laughs> it's huge. It's long. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty deep. Um, yeah, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. And then, then you get like they have like the neoprene mat, like the big huge mm-hmm. one of those. They've got like, Where do you even the push sticks. You have to have like a yeah, closet push sticks. just um, for that thing. <laughs> we played it on my hot tub. That's where I play. Like when I use the mat, we do the whole world thing. Like I literally like just wheel, wheel the whole. Oh, that's the biggest area of like a surface I area I've had. Hot tub. <laughs> I did, oh, I just needed to sprinkle that information <laughs> in there. <laughs> yeah, saying my dining room table is not big enough to handle that. So oh, I, I have, have a dining room table. Yeah. I have a oh, tiny oh, table. I don't eat on a on a little stool. Oh, look <laughs> yeah. at me. I don't eat on my ottoman in my couch. <laughs> <laughs> It is. <laughs> How are you living exactly, Dan? <laughs> it's the most epic yeah. dudes on a map game I think I've ever played. Yeah. It's just on this grand scale. Uh, and the planning is really satisfying when you're able to pull off the moves that, that you want to pull off. I, I, the team planning yes. is really fun, too. I haven't got to play on a team yet. Especially when you like have to fun. make all your uh, partners' decisions <laughs> as well. That's really fun. <laughs> I was going to leave that <laughs> out. Uh, teammates can I determine know. your enjoyment of the experience, it, but yeah. I still liked everything I was doing. That's a good. lot. Yeah, Yeah. no, I, this is this has got to be my top three want to play games. Uh, I am, though, honestly intimidated to play against like someone like you. You're just so and that, knowledgeable. And then about, that's that's kind Kind of like what I run into is like so I, I try to play either like I'm doing like a one v many or right. I, like I try to do into teams right and have at least one experienced person on each team so right because it's not a game rules. like a lot of the times uh, if there's a game that's like really complicated or mm-hmm. that not not complicated but like knowing the ins and outs of the game basically guarantees victory like uh like the first time i taught shadow network i just sat out and i'm just like listen I, there's just so much going on here i feel like i'll have a, i'll have you an unfair play. advantage <laughs> um but like at the same time i'm not going to be like bob could you please sit out of this four hour game and just watch just us watch play? play like it's, just, it's too big <laughs> you know too long that, so but yeah, yeah. yeah but i'd uh, be giving advice though like, it'd, it'd be <laughs> interesting to have like a like you're like an outside like you know, like World Congress kind of player that like everyone approaches, and he's just like, "Listen, I don't. He's invading Britain, and I just don't." Do? He's like, "Well, you could, you know." Like. Have you tried building more tanks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's great though. Check it out. Yeah, I mean the fact that it gets an eight point three and is oh, ranked nice. two thousand three hundred twenty six. People like it, but not enough people are playing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Good pick. My number three, I'm kind of expecting some crossover here. Mine is Resurgence. Ooh. So I know that, okay, I bought this game from the designer, Stan Kordonsky at Origins, because I you, knew he you, was going to be you, selling you it. it. I told Bob about it, and I'm like, Bob, <laughs> it's my shift at the booth. Will you go pick this game up for me? And he's like, all right, I'm going to buy myself a copy as well. Um, I just, this is a game I, I really thought I could like, because this mixes bag building and worker placement. And it works so phenomenally well. Yeah. You're, you're building these card combos that have synergies that just work really well and are very satisfying when you pull them off. I mean, you're recruiting these cards that will say, all right, every time I gain a food, I also gain an oil. Oh, but every time I have this card that says every time I gain oil, I also gain this. And so you're tapping like three, four, five cards in one turn and just this chain reaction combos Mm -hmm. just all go off on one turn 
meanwhile you're deck building or your bag, bag building, building and you're getting these workers that change where you can place them and they give you stronger actions from the main board uh, but yeah you're also working on your main player board that gives you even more your actions base. you can use yeah. and your base uh, you can improve the quality of your compound and then you're drawing even more chips from your bag and just the the combos that you build uh, I know this was like in your top 20 I know this was in your like top 30 I had this in the 40s like we all absolutely loved this game and the fact that it's ranked 2461 is criminal I, I think this game is very yeah. good and not enough people play yeah, it only or talk about it 700 ratings on that's it. what I was going to ask it yeah. gets a 7.8 so mm -hmm. again the people that are playing this game enjoy it I just don't think there's enough people playing this game I, I love that you're like assigning your workers like hidden at first because there's basically three main areas uh, and you're assigning them um, behind the screen and then once everybody's assigned their workers then you reveal the screen you're like oh okay so he's got a bunch of workers going to the metro area so I better take my one metro guy and get him in that zone before I have to pay extra resources because Mike's got all his dudes in that area and I really like that hidden planning movement and then you can always get those you can get uh, cards that say like you know what after everybody's revealed you can take a worker and move them to a different area and so you can kind of like manipulate that and everything it's it's really good uh, this so spoilers it's not on my list for one reason and that is I didn't even look at it because I assumed this came out in 2023 2022. Dang. So I could have included it. I thought this was an early 23 release, mm -hmm. so I did not include it. And I just didn't look it up because I was that confident. And sometimes confidence gets you, gets you wrong. Um, so this would have been around my eight then with 700 votes. It would have been around my eight. Mm -hmm. It deserves to be mentioned for sure. I'm glad you did. I looked I, I looked at it, but I didn't look at its stats because I was like, nah, that had yeah. to have come out last year. So Whoops. I think it was a Oops. late 2022. It was late. Okay. Um, and maybe it is getting overshadowed by Endless Winter, which came out shortly Around after that time. one yeah, and same, got a ton of accolades, which we're deserving. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just think this one gets overlooked. Uh, okay. I was scrolling through because I was looking for that information. My number three is Into the Echo Side. Nice. I don't really have anything else to add. Uh, I knew uh, Bob might mention it, and he did. Uh, just for a refresher, yeah, only what I had, obviously, we would have taken our notes at different times, so they're going to be slightly, slightly different, different, maybe, but uh, only 81 votes for this game, man. And it yeah. is, like I said, it's the best pure deck builder that's out there. Um, Arctic Scavengers is close for me. I like that game a lot, but Into the Echo Side was just such a fulfilling, well-balanced game design, and part of it could have been me going in not expecting much. Right. You know, this is an IP game and an ICP <laughs> game. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, I'm just not into that. Uh, the, the art and stuff is like, you know, it's it's good art, but it's not like something I'm into like mm. looking at it. I don't get like an emotional response looking at it or anything. Mm. I'm just like, oh, okay, you know. Mm. Um, and I played it and I was just like, this is great. And then I played <laughs> it again. And then I played it again. I played it like maybe five times or something. And I, it's just great every single time. I will say just because he's not on the panel, Tim would complain that the fate die, is that what it's called? I can't remember what it's called. There's a die mechanic yeah. in yeah. the Wheel game. Of fate. Wheel, Wheel of fate. fate. Yeah. He does not like that mechanic. He feels like it feel, uh, it, it's kind of like uh, shoehorned in and like doesn't impact the game enough. A fair complaint. I don't there feel that way, but with it, that but... might just be be that I take advantage of it every time I play because I think it's fun mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't feel that same feeling but a valid complaint nonetheless um, but yeah again if you have a chance to get this for a reasonable price and you like pure deck builders like a dominion you know is the thing I would always uh, compare it to uh, it's it's just fantastic I think it's the best one on the market so that is into the echo side good pick Dan <laughs> <laughs> all right my number three is a 2021 release, two-player game, Pachacuna. See, uh, I looked it up. Um, it is... It's the Llama one, right? Yeah, the Llama one. Uh, it's got about 500 ratings, okay. um, and it's 4,500. Uh, it but it's almost player. a seven. Yeah, yeah, it's just two-player, and actually it makes sense. So the idea of the game is uh, you are Llama traders in the Andes Mountains and you're going from a village. Each village will have a good that it wants and a good that it is going to give. So you want to collect that good, put it on your llama, and then get to another village to give that good and get points. But as you're moving along, one player is the white llama and one player is the black llama. 
The white llama can only move on the valleys, and the black llama can only move over the mountains. And each piece, a hexagon, can be moved and manipulated. And so you're turning pieces around to block each other off mm. and get your own route to all the other things. Interesting. Yeah, I really liked that part of the game where but you're... That sounds interesting, but I wonder, how do you manipulate a mountain like that to change the path to mountain, <laughs> to ridge, to valley? Black let me, magic. Let me show you. <laughs> You don't know much about llamas, do you? Apparently not. <laughs> They're magic. Uh, yeah, I played this uh, I played this one with you. It was a, it was yeah, a fun yeah, game. Yeah, it was, it was a fun game. That was our little Dan and Spencer game night that we yeah, had. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. It was Llama Traitor. Oh, oh Traitor, yes. Traitor. Yes. Okay. yes. I've, always, I've always wanted to make a game called Traitor Traitor, uh, and, I'm not, and I'm not sure if it would either be you're playing a bunch of people who trade and someone is secretly like working for the black market and like trading stuff behind your back or it would be we're all a bunch of trade or or we are like selling traitors to different like companies i can't I, both I, i'm not sure which one would be more fun <laughs> but i've always wanted a game called trader trader i just think that, that is very funny i don't know like worker placement, the worker placement. Exactly, game? or deck builder, deck building, the deck builder. Yeah. But you guys can be ironic with it. This is my deck builder of the game, and there's no cards in it at all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> building the deck. It's worker yeah. placement. It's building the deck. It's worker placement. <laughs> no, I, I still want to do the space. Uh, Spaceballs board game. It's yeah. only about selling Spaceballs board game. Yeah, yeah. No, nothing else. Right. No, none of the movies involved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just all it is. The product you sell is Spaceballs the board game. Uh, um, yeah. So yeah. quest for more money. Yeah, so this Pachacuna, um, it also, it's modular, so you can mess around with how you set up the game. Um, there's a, it gives you some certain setups, sure. uh, but still, it's, I, I enjoyed it. I remember and, it uh, not being super easy. No, trying to, no, it you know, looks Picking easy. up what you need and then mm -hmm. trying to follow this path and your opponent keeps messing with your path and you're like, Spencer, you're being kind of a jerk. <laughs> and then you lay on a red couch and talk about it for a while. <laughs> yeah, it, it's deceptively hard. Um, it looks like it's going to be an easy game, but then when things start blocking off, you're like, okay, now I have to figure out this route. Is he going to turn this one because he needs to go in this route? And they start getting deeper and deeper, and you're like, okay, I've gone too deep. <laughs> like the dwarves. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they awoke. Uh, it takes us down to number two. Uh, so my number two has a, a few more uh, ratings than some of the other ones, a little over a thousand ratings. But after the Empire, I feel is a great game that more people need to hear and play. Uh, it's I love the tactile, like, oh, I have this wooden castle, and then I'm going to be spending my resources to convert those into stone, and then these cards are being flipped over, and they have different types of enemies that are coming for the gold in your castle, and they're coming from different directions depending on like which way the card gets flipped over, and there's this worker placement area where you're like recruiting mercenaries, and you're recruiting knights, and the thing is, though, is if you have too many knights left over, you got to feed them all at the end of the day, so with Mike's strategy, if they die off, you don't got to feed them, you know, so... <laughs> uh, but... I, I just I just really enjoy the whole, this is my castle, I'm defending it, I'm putting all my workers and stuff on here, I'm growing my food that I need to feed everybody. And then, yes, there's the communal area where you're worker placing and blocking people and gathering resources, but then as all the invaders are coming, it's basically my own board, you're not really interacting with other people. Um, but it's it makes sense because the more gold you have, the more people are going to be invading you. And it has just a really neat way to keep a runaway leader from happening because if they're getting so much money, well, then they have a ton of people who are coming to evade and they're not going to be able to defend and it's going to knock them back down a couple of pegs and keep the game more even. And I think it's just a fantastic game. They're working on expansions for it, so hopefully some of that will be coming out. And um, yeah, After the Empire by um, Gray Fox. Gray Fox Games is fantastic. Uh, this was on your underrated list as well. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, lots, of, lots of crossover there on accident. Yep. Uh, yeah, good game. I was just thinking about this is kind of like the, um, like if you like like a Galaxy Trucker kind of game, but want like more of a game there. It's like this whole game is you building something up that will be destroyed. That, yeah, people are coming to destroy. <laughs> and then you will build it back up and then it will be destroyed. <laughs> just don't get sacked. <laughs> yeah. um, this is also, uh, this 
if we ever made like a top 10 games with catch-up mechanics, I think so, this would be my number one. Mm. This game has like two or three different catch-up mechanics in it, and they're just all great. Uh, it, it's It feels integrated. like one of the most balanced mm -hmm. games ever because, yeah, everything is so well integrated and so well done to try to make it feel fair. It's it's very good. Mm -hmm. Still really need to play this one. Me too. Yeah, you do. It's people like Why? playing it's it at a crap. convention. <laughs> <laughs> After all that. <laughs> He's joking. Yeah. Uh, you, people see you playing it at a convention and they're like, oh, I want to play that yes. because it's got great table presence. Yeah. It does. Mm -hmm. Good pick. Yeah. All right, my number two is an older game. It is Sons of Anarchy, Men of Mayhem. Yeah. This so, is on your underrated list. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about this game a lot. Yeah, and we don't I do. Play <laughs> and I, I think it's just, I really think the theme hurts this it game. Does. There's, you know, you put a motorcycle club um, show, yeah, show where multiple people are murdered throughout the show. Uh, violence throughout. Great show, by the way. I enjoyed it. Um, and you tack that on to what is really a worker placement Euro. Um, I think you kind of alienate some of your player base is essentially what has happened there. But this is a good game. And it's because this is a worker placement game. So as an action, I can move some of my guys out to a location. But I can't use it right away because a different player could move some of their guys to that same location. Now that area is contested. So until we battle and someone gets cleared off of that location, nobody's going to get to use the abilities on that tile. Um, and so the, the tiles are very useful and some are clearly better than others. And so you're going to get people turtling on the best spot in the game very early. And your goal is to get them off of that spot by attacking them as many times as it takes. Um, and this is one of those games where I like hidden victory points. I don't like always knowing who's winning, who's the leader you, it is most money wins. And so these uh, locations are allowing you to take resources and sell them for money. Um, but I also like how it's got a market phase. It's actually after you do all the worker placement, you're moving stuff uh, and you're battling. Um, after that, there's this market phase where you're taking contraband you've collected from the different uh, the different places on the board. Uh, you're going to blindly put them in your hand and reveal. If you flooded the market, then your contraband is not worth as much money. So it'll have like these thresholds. And so it'll say, okay, if there's a four player game, if nine resources are revealed, they're all worth each one. So you're like, okay, if everybody has two, we're good. But if one person has three in their hand, then all of them are only going to be worth one. Okay, so do I only put one in my hand and try to get two out of it and save my others? It, it, so just the way that market works it is really, really interesting. And I just think this game has been slept on because of its theme. And it is a good mechanically sound game. Uh, it's got a ton of player interaction. Battles are constantly happening. You're recruiting better guys. Um, and everybody's got an asymmetric ability as well based on the gang that they're representing. There's a five player expansion. It's still in print. You can still get it. Gale Force 9 printed this one and I think this one never got enough love, and I still enjoy it to this day. Yeah, speaking of, like, you know, games where they, like, take shows and they just slap on, like, themes like that, and it kind of, like, hurts it. That might have been what hurt my Fire and Axe, a Sopranos saga, mm -hmm. you know, because they, they threw that Sopranos logo on there, and then they think that it's... Never mind. <laughs> hey! Yeah, that, was, that was a deep cut. That was a deep cut. Yeah. <laughs> I, wasn't wow. I wasn't sure if anyone out there would have gotten I that. I caught it. Wow. Yeah, it was <laughs> wow. Um, Mike agreed for a second. He's like, yeah. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, Gale Force 9 has reprinted some games. Like, they took, um, uh, oh, geez. Um, uh, I mean, they did Dune, while you're thinking. Yeah, uh, They reprinted Dune. Um, mm -hmm. Gale Force 9. It's one they, they redid, redid with new art only a couple years ago. Um, okay. I have it. <laughs> I can't even. I'm Tired just starting. Of the Underdark? No. Spartacus? 
Spartacus, Spartacus. thank you. Another. Oh, I didn't know that was a reprint. Show IP. Mm-hmm. They it came out years ago, went out of print. They updated the art and they reprinted it. That, I've heard great things about that. That is game a too. surprisingly good game. I haven't yeah. played it in like a decade, but like when I played it again, I, I was expecting crap because they take those TV and shows I, yeah. and they slap them on there. And I played it and I was like. Wait this is good. Yeah. <laughs> so if you keep designing good games, stop slapping shows on it. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like and I, I had the same reaction there. to Sons of Anarchy. I'm like, yeah. wow, this is a surprisingly good game. And I think people will avoid this one because of its controversial theme. Don't. Uh, if you want to play a good worker placement game with tons of interaction, the battling constantly. Kind of like yeah, a little, little bit of selling, sell low. What's uh, the CPR low. on that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got you I there. mean, it's a medium. It's a medium weight game. Okay. Uh, you know, but, um, uh, it's really good. It says here it's been uh, re-implemented by Vault of Dragons and Wise Guys, which I think oh, are Wise Guys that's games right. are similar. I forgot yeah. about that. But they're not as highly rated. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like they somebody thought, hey, let's try this with a less controversial theme and. I don't know. Maybe people were like, oh, it's based on that show. Maybe I not. I, I think don't know. we did Wise Guys for this show. Did we? We might have. I thought we did. I, I recognize I the box. I remember, and I remember the name, it as well. But well now I got to look at I have box. played Wise Guys. I remember that one. Um, Wise Guys, huh? Yeah, yeah. We definitely Wise did that for guys. the show. Really? Come on, Internet. So two slow. words. Anyway, oh, yeah, so I mean, if that's a re implementation of Sons of Anarchy, there we go. We played it. <laughs> 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 that doesn't look like much of a box. Oh, I got the right, wrong one. Yeah, wrong one. Okay. Is it two yeah. words? Yeah, I think it's two words. Yeah. You know how English works? Yeah. yeah, but I typed in wise guys and it all popped up as one word. It's because... It's wise guys, not wise guys. Hey, That's wise one word. Guys. There we go. 2022? 2022 release. No, I didn't play that game. It must have been without me. Must have been. Good. Okay. Rival gangs battling it out. That sounds like Sons of Anarchy. All right, now that we suss that out. And my number two is going to be super fast because, Bob, get, give me back my thunder. Oh, sorry. Here you go. What the hell? Just ask if you want to steal my thunder about Shadow Network. Yeah, that's a good pick, Dan. Nice, yeah. Everyone knew I was going to talk about Shadow Network. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, it's, yes, like Bob said, I have it at 66 votes and rated 11,538. Criminal. It's, wow. it's, it's, really it's literally criminal. Whoever runs BGG, I'm sorry, I did report you. The authorities are on their way. Just stay where you are, the um, cops will be right there. Yeah. <laughs> Stop resisting. Um, so, uh, he, like everything he said earlier, it's uh, it's a worker placement game uh, set during the Cold War where you are running like a spy agency. You are going out and you are collecting the intel. When you collect intel, intel leaks to other places. So the board has a self-seeding thing where uh, the spots that don't get picked slowly get better and better naturally. Um, but also if you have a little bit of choice in where it goes. I can either put this here or here when it leaks. And like Mike was saying, 90% of this game takes place not on your turn. On your turn, you place a work and you take the resources and you can visit the black market if you want to. Then you pass turn and everything else happens. The entire game is resource conversion. This does like what Century, you know, wants to do, right? Where it's just like, okay, I turn two blue into a red. Now that I have a red, I activate this card that turns that into three silver. Now I have three silver, I can turn that into three blue and two red. Boom, I just doubled my stuff and everything, right? Um, it, it, it's that just over and over and over again to make suitcases, um, to fulfill milestones, and to complete contracts. Um, it's incredible. It's one of my favorite games of all time, like I said. And I, man, this game needs more people's eyes on it. Yeah, I like the black months. market. The black market in that game is is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a bunch of crazy, uh, powerful things you can do to set up your next off turn. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, I, you took the thing I want. Okay, I'm gonna screw you next turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is officially the most underrated game that we've mentioned today. I, mm. It will probably remain that way. <laughs> well, until you're number one, whatever that is. <laughs> All right. My number two uh, is one of the early Kickstarter games. Um, it's called Antidote. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Antidote. Every time I bring this game anywhere, they're like, okay, yeah, we'll try it. And then by the end, they're like, I need this game. This is fun. <laughs> it yeah. is crazy. It's a like, party game. But but that's a lie. <laughs> yeah, it's a lie. It's a hidden traitor stab your friends in the back game. <laughs> it is stress in a box. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea of this game is you are all uh, chemists or, or biologists, whatever. You're scientists, and you're working in a lab, and someone accidentally breaks a vial 
but you don't know which vial it was that got broken, and this vial is full of some deadly disease. And you're all been working on the different antidotes, so now you're like, I have to figure out which is the one that broke and drink that antidote. And I only have half an hour. And so the game is every round, uh, players, first off, every uh, suit is one of the different chemicals, and they go one through however many players there are, and an X. And at the beginning of the game, you're going to randomly remove one of the X cards, no one sees what it is, then everything gets shuffled up and dealt to everyone, so there are no cards remaining. And then you may either play a special card, you know, syringes or something like that, that do something cool. You may trade with a single person, but they can refuse. You can say everyone trade to your left or everyone trade to your right, or you can say everyone put down a card, face down or face up. And so as you're going, your hand is dwindling and you're looking at what people have placed and you're like, okay, if he placed that one, that means he may have seen the X. And so you're trying to deduce which is the one that no one has seen and keep that antidote in your hand. And if it's the last one in your hand at the end of the game, you get the number of points on it. Otherwise, you die. <laughs> yeah, the, the goal is you want the highest, the highest number, number of, of the, the one correct that's broken. X. Yes, yeah. and you play in three rounds. And that's crazy enough, because you're going through this game and it is just buckets of sweat going down your, your head. And then there's another uh, upgrade um, where you change your role. Now, normally your role is I drink the one so I don't die. But there are these optional ones where you can, uh, it'll be like, my goal is to have the person on my right drink the one and I will score their points plus two. Or my goal is to have as many people survive as possible and I get plus one point for everyone who survives. Or my goal is, and I love this one, um, at the end of the game, I get to swap whichever card I had and anyone who chose the one that I swap out, out with, because uh, I fooled them, I get their, the points for them. And so uh, you're starting to wonder, okay, he has a card. Is he mm -hmm. trying to help this one? Okay. This guy keeps handing me X's. He must be wanting me to win. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy fun. Yes. It is so stressful, mm -hmm. but in a good way. It's a very fun little deduction card game for sure. I've played this one many times. Do you know what the player count is on that? I think it goes up to eight. Like, what's the minimum? Oh, let me find it. Oh, I think three. Oh, three it might eight. be two. Because there's, Can when you you're playing with two, up? it's two to seven. Two to seven. So when it's two, you have a phantom okay. hand that you trade around with. Yeah. I think there's also something in the game, again though, there's like asymmetric powers that change a bunch of stuff, but I think there's also something in the game that like you said, you can play them down in front of you, and it's like, if you play it face up, it can't be stolen, but now everyone knows your information. Right. And if you play it face down, it can be stolen because only you know that information or something like that. Yeah, there's there's, like there's that. all kinds of stuff like that going in there too. And, um, and some of them let you peek out a card and mm -hmm. put it back, things like that. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. The only caveat to that game, though, is uh, you have to be very careful about hand management. There have been once I played and we accidentally somehow shuffled the X back in Oops. and no one won because there, there was no... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess we all wasted live. 15 minutes of your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and sometimes we'll do it and we're like, I have three cards left. Why do you have four? Because yeah. everyone has to have the exact same number of cards. Right. So yeah, just careful with hand management, uh, card management, and yeah, it's it's a it's relatively really short, fun though, game. So it's, it's relatively short. The the names of the <clears throat> poisons are fun, and the art is good. Mm -hmm. I like it. Nice. Yeah. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for. Number one. One one one. My number one's already been mentioned today. Because sometimes Mike is right, yep. but not very often. Resurgence. Mm -hmm. It's great. Uh, it's fantastic for all the reasons Stupid we talked about earlier. Stupid 2022 release. Yeah, sorry, Dan. <laughs> uh, but more people need to know about this game. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. If you like worker placement, this whole like hidden placement first is a fantastic like implementation. Like I I, I love that. Like, I, I, I'm all, like, I love hidden. Hidden movement, hidden roll types of things. Dan and I played like the Call of Duty, the hidden roll. Oh. That was fantastic. Like I, I love that kind of Great stuff. Game. And this takes that hidden movement type of thing and puts it into a worker placement, and it, it does a great job. And so more people need to check it out. And uh, also let me know if you have played this game. Look at your copy. Do you have a miscolored disc? I had a miscolored disc in mine. I was wondering if that was everybody or if I'm special. 
sell it on eBay for a whole well, bunch yes, of money. If that's the alternative, it must be everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are the only two options you have. Either I'm special or everybody else has it. Uh, but it's a fantastic game. Check it out. Half a Kingdom Games. It's very good. Mm-hmm. All right, my number one is a 2023 release, but I just don't think it's getting the love it deserves, and it's Lunar Rush. Lunar Rush uh, came out last year. It's it's ranked 6,879. It's only got 158 ratings, but those ratings are giving it a 7.9, which again tells you the people that are playing this game like it, it, but not enough people are playing it and Mm. talking about it. This is one of my favorite games that came out in 2023. I really like that market manipulation that we talked about earlier, where I need to get my goods shipped out to the moon and back to me at a time to where I can use them and maximize where they are currently being sold at on the market. That just that, That's just amazing to me that they were able to make that a theme in the game and it works so incredibly well just trying to time getting those resources back trying to time uh where the value is and the market the fact that they included multiple markets and that you can change them each game uh it may not be the yeah. exact same like, value like how the prices go up and down yeah, yeah it's yeah. not yeah. just a strict curve right. it is different there's multiple different versions of the market you can use yeah. and i just thought everything that this game did and the fact that it plays in 75 minutes mm-hmm. like i just don't know that many games that offer all of that in a, a package that plays in 75 minutes it's relatively easy to learn and play uh Good and components. i just yeah it looks great those mm-hmm. holographic cards are really awesome are pretty, the little ships the dual later ships mm-hmm. the whole other stuff as you move them around yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this one and it didn't care that it was new. Uh, I just, I don't know if it's going to be number one on people's game of the year list, uh, but it's pretty close to mine. Uh, this was, uh, by the way, published by Dead Alive Games and designed by Skippy Brown. It's fantastic. Yeah, doesn't Great. this one have where you're, you're uh, bidding on player order? Uh, yeah. You have different mm-hmm. one through five and... Uh, you get if you get the quick route, you can only put one thing on it. Right. But of course, it's back and forth it's real fast, fast. Mm-hmm. and so you're trying to manipulate that market right away. I remember I was playing, I think, with you, and <laughs> <laughs> you like immediately started like turn two. You were making cool things and manipulating the market. I'm like you. You bad person. <laughs> <laughs> well, I lost because yeah, I started, I started Close, quick started and then faded towards the end. Yeah, I think at the end, Small those strategy. gold foil cards are mm-hmm. so powerful. I so got one that just gives you points. Yeah. And I, I can't remember if I won. It might have been a tie, but it was, I think, because of that card. Oh, that is a really good game. Yep. I really like that game. Yeah, I, again, I just think it's a, a it is a new release, yep. uh, but I still consider this a hidden gem just because of the ratings ba- and the number of rankings. It just it's not enough. It, it's really, really good. Do us a favor. Don't tell Tim. <laughs> but it was thanks to him that we found this game. Because <laughs> he he set up a uh, a little demo uh, in our booth for Gen Con and we played through the demo. Like he, it's mm-hmm. funny because um, right. he had gotten the box in. It was the first time he had see, opened up a deluxe copy himself because he had just come in and he was like, "Oh my gosh, this is so cool!" Like it was really neat to see him like open up his own like a designer open up his own game and be kind of floored by the production value and everything. And he taught it to us and it was awesome. Went to the booth the next day, bought a copy. Yeah, it's it was really good. Yep, we got two videos on this one. Check yep. them out. Yep. My number one I knew wasn't going to be on your guys' list. I seem to be the only person. I mean, people like it, but I seem to be the only person that like talks about it constantly. Uh, 42 votes. 42 people I mean, that's the answer. on the planet <laughs> yeah. have freaking rated this game, and that's Conclusio. Oh, I wow. knew wow. this was going to be on your list. Yeah. Gosh, Conclusio is ranked 13,821 wow. and with 42 votes um, has a 7.3. It's funny because it is, I don't know which one, it was higher than... Uh, it was one that was 39. Wolves of Mercia was 15,000 with more oh. votes. So 
that tells you something about people liking Conclusio, you know? But Conclusio is a straight-up deduction game where you have a hand of cards, uh, one card is facing away from you, and you are playing cards and asking if the card you played has anything in common with the card that you are holding away from you, either color, uh, shape, or number, and if it does, it's a yes, if not, it's a no, it goes in different piles, and basically the first person to be able to guess their entire card correctly, it's a square purple three, wins the game. That's the entire game, but it is just a fantastic, fast deduction game. I just saw, don't know how we haven't covered this yet, when I was doing my research, if you go to Conclusio on BGG, it is re-implemented by Deducto. It was Seriously? remade uh, under really? a different theme. Didn't know that, so I'm gonna have to get a copy of Deducto and cover that on our channel nice. because I didn't know, and hopefully maybe that version takes off. Um, but uh, yeah, so... Uh, very, very uh, interested in trying that out, but yes, Conclusio, fantastic. Uh, made by, uh, designed by a local boy uh, here too, which is always cool that we we knew him before he designed the game, and that's just a really cool thing yeah, too. Robert uh, Kerr. Yeah, yeah, Rob, Rob Kerr. Uh, is it deducto or deduct something? Um, deducto, but it's yeah, like D E D U C K. Right, because it's a, it's, it's like a, a, it's, it's like a duck, a duck with on a the cover. Glass, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out. But that one only has 84 ratings, so it's still pretty low. Yeah. Well, um, it's newer sure. too, right? But um, so 2023. Hmm. Yeah, I remember minutes. this. It, it was if you like Turing Machine, this is like the light Turing Machine. It's like all logic, figuring something out by the hints yeah, that are coming out. Yeah, but you're asking other people. Yeah, not, yeah, that's, that's like true. A, that's true. Right. Yeah. Sure, I could hear the argument. It's very light. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very but light. It's a, a short, short game. I'm a difficult player. Played it at, finally played it at Origins. It was fun. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that means I'm the last one. Oh. Uh, the last number we one. We just skip it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to my number zero instead. Yeah, so anyway, so honorable, anybody have any honorable mentions? Yeah. <laughs> my uh, number zero honorable, honorable mention is <laughs> um, Wizards of the Grimoire. Uh, I mentioned this one yeah, uh, in a previous familiar. video. Yeah. Uh, it's a two-player card game uh, where everyone is, you're both playing as wizards. That's like your second game you've heard everybody playing I know. as wizards. You want to be apparently. A wizard. I want to be a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Give <him> a hat. <laughs> uh, and you have a market in the middle of different spells. Everyone has. You're gonna have two hand. Well, you have a hand of uh, mana. And each card is worth one mana. It doesn't matter what's printed on it. So something will say, I need to use this spell. I need to put three mana down on it. So I'm going to pick three of those cards. I'm going to face down on that spell. When it has mana on it, that spell can no longer be used. But at the beginning of every turn, one of those is going to come off. Now, on the other side of those mana cards, there's a number. And some of the spells will be like, flip over this number. It does that much damage to your opponent. Or things like that. And so it does... The combos in this game are crazy as you're... But you're buying one thing, it's free, but one every turn you get to take from the market. And of course your opponent is taking them too, and you're looking at what you're doing to each other. And you the, the combos you get in this game are fantastic. The art is wonderful. It's a brother team. It's just two uh, brothers who made this game. Uh, and I had it open a second ago. Did this uh, come out last year, or did you first play just, it last year? I first played this last year. It came okay. out uh, in 22. Okay, just one. Um, I knew it was newer. Cole and Joe Banning, yeah, from uh, Grimoire Games. So, uh, yeah, this is one of the most balanced games I've ever played. Every time I've played this game, it has been a very close game. And, I mean, I'm trying all sorts of different strategies, and yet somehow it's still such a close game. Oh, yes. Don't open that file. Yes, they're, they're <laughs> no, working uh, on a on a uh, 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 expansion. I, I recognize the name Grimoire Games, so I was seeing if they did anything else, but it, yeah. it's not them. Okay. No, yeah. Yeah. I think There's that a name different, familiar. yeah, Grimoire, Wasn't whatever. Wasn't that uh, Mini Steel or something like that? I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. I think it's We're their last name team, so. is Grimoire. I okay. think, right? Those people? Yeah. Like, it might be spelled slightly different. I looked for but. Mini Steel on the BGG and I couldn't find it. Oh. Uh, you probably just, it's one word, I uh, think. Yeah. That might be yeah, it. Yeah, it's word work. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's actually uh, it's ranked four thousand ish, and uh, it only has four hundred ratings. So I think it needs a bump because it's seven point five on here. So it's pretty good. Yeah. What's the oh company? Oh my gosh! Yes. So honorable mention. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the company's name that did Mini Steel? Uh, publisher uh, Graymore. Graymore. That's, that's what right. it was. Yeah. Uh, darn close. it. Great list, guys. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was okay. 
<laughs> you got almost 40 different hidden gems for you to check yeah, out. Very oh, few yeah. crossovers. Very there are few some, crossovers. but not very many. Yeah, a couple. What hidden, uh, hidden, what honorable mentions? Hid, hid, hidden mentions? Hidden Not mention. gonna say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're hidden. Wouldn't quite be hidden anymore. Uh, well, uh, like we just said, Mini Steel. That was yeah, a fantastic little game that we did. It comes in a little tiny box, and it's kind of a, a game of take that, but we had a ton of fun playing that game. So that was, a, and that's only got 23 ratings. Another game of combos. Yeah, 23 ratings, but at 8.6. 8.6. Wow. 8. Yeah. Dang. Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. Stuff. Mm hmm. Pretty good. Now, I don't okay. ever see where it's like ranked. It doesn't ever have a, a number on here. What was that game? Um, everyone has a deck of cards, and you can either do shield or you can do the hit, or you can do assassin. Mini steel. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, okay, it does that too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But you had like one of the assassin, and if someone's resting, you assassin, you kill them immediately. Oh, um, paradigm. Uh, that's the one that Tim. Uh, yeah. Tim, was, uh, paradigm. Uh, what is it? It's not shift, is it? No. It's um, pocket, paradigms. pocket paradigms. Pocket paradigms. I was gonna say that, yeah. but you were saying paradigm. I was, close, I was like, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pocket paragon. Yeah, paragon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other honorable mention I had was um, an older game from 2013 that we just played for the first time last year, though. But Potato Man. Oh. I thought that game was super <laughs> unique. Yeah. Like I played so many different like trick takers and things like that, and the way that you you know so many times in a trick taker you're following suit or maybe you trump a, you know trump it to to take it, but this one is you have to play a suit that hasn't been played yet, and that was like a super unique twist on it, and we had a lot of fun playing that game. Uh, that I think more people should. I wrote that one out. down too, and uh, it's getting reprinted. Oh is sweet. Why we were covering it? Okay. And we'll have a video out for that shortly too. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Potato man. That was a good pick. I had that one written down as an honorable. Uh, I also put down Custom Heroes. Uh, this is the John D. Clare game that like nobody talks about. Uh, this is also his card crafting system, except this is also a card shedding game where you're trying to go out first by winning tricks. Um, and so, but yeah, you're you're customizing your cards. And so they're gradually going to get better as you play and just seeing some of these special abilities get slotted into these cards. Well, I had a nine, but I was able to add four to it. Now I've got a 13 that I can use. Uh, but then, yes, it is. Um, but then those cards all get shuffled together and you may not have that card the second round. Somebody else may get that card. Uh, but I like card shedding and trick taking and then you add in John Declare's card crafting and it makes a great game. Um, Teen Titans Go, the deck building game. So seriously, this is, it, yeah, seriously, because everybody knows DC deck building. Well, a lot of people like it, a DC deck building. Oh, this Tim. one, you and Tim. This, <laughs> I still enjoy it. There's two ratings. I thought Teen Titans Go was just as good, but because it is the kid version of all the DC characters being based on Teen Titans Go. Some people might think, well, it's not as good. It's just as good. <laughs> Titans was better. Same game. <laughs> it's the same game. But if you have a kid at home that prefers that theme, get it. It's just as good. You reminded me of something I wanted to say a second ago when you said, oh, it has two ratings that ever you're funny joke. No. Um, so it's just crazy. So concludes you had 42 votes, I said, right? Yep. Two of those are me. <laughs> right? Dan rates things because, because my personal thing has rated it and the board game rundowns, which, uh, which I kind of run, ha has sure, rated sure. it. Nice. So, like, it's just crazy. That means there's only 40 other people on the planet that have rated that game. Wow. Like, I was just, I was thinking two about that. Tim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. And so, like, every number on here, it's like I have to subtract two because that's my account, my, my wow. the two accounts I run. So, I'm just like, man, 40 votes for that game. Insane. <laughs> but anyway, it's funny. Uh, I got a few more that I'll go over real quick. Uh, Bonsai. Uh, yes. Bonsai is a very oh, unique sure, game yeah. from DV Games. Mm -hmm. I like how it's a tile placement game, but it actually uses um, the 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 look or the shape of a bonsai tree as a natural limitation on how you can actually grow tree. your your tree. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a twenty twenty three release. Also. Yeah, that's so a newer game, <laughs> uh, but it's. You know, 6,249. It's newer, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I enjoyed that one. Um, and Dice Miner, uh, Dice Miner oh, from Miner. Atlas Games is, it, is really no, good. good. Is that one not popular? Uh, it's It was like in the 2000s, I think. It gets talked about. It's a good one. It's a good one. It, it's a really solid filler. I, I It's like a beer and pretzels game, and it literally has beer on some of the dice. Uh, so when's the, the pretzel expansion? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, good question. Uh, <laughs> um, and then uh, I'll go with, um, you know, I wrote it down, and I wasn't sure if I was going to mention it. Marvel Remix. 
the reason oh, Marvel on. Remix that's, is underrated is because everybody talks about every other Marvel game, and that's this true. one I think is Remix actually is the best one. <laughs> correct, and that's why I think it is more of a hidden gem than other Marvel games. Don't so Bob, that that's all. That's Shh, all. Don't tell Bob and then my last one I'll throw out there is processing a game of surviving humanity. Uh, this is Fight in a Box Games, designed by Seppi Yoon. Uh, just a very unique game about how aliens would process humans when they go to harvest I them. Oh, the God. theme is just wild. The art is wild and unique. Uh, it, it really is kind of like nothing. It's it's really kind of like nothing I've ever played. So check that one out. Uh, uh, Bob said no because of too many ratings, but Paint the Roses is, is it's good. Really good. <laughs> it's really good. I, I, I don't hear deduction. anyone talking about it, and yeah, sure. it's a team deduction kind of game, and I just don't think there's enough co-op deduction games out there, so mm. listen, if, if you want to get one and you already have Shipwreck Arcana, check that out. Yeah, it's a good one, too. That probably would be better than your yeah, it, 80 ratings on processing, by the way. Yeah. I it, think I oh. looked at Shipwreck Arcana, and it was, it was too popular for oh, what okay. I wanted to do, but I, it was one of the first games I thought about because I, I don't hear anyone talking about it, and it is a... For a long time, it was kind of harder to get. Like, it you was, can only get it through their website. It's actually but. ranked pretty highly, too. People are finally Seven, playing eight. it. Yeah, figuring it out. Figured it out. Figured it out. Then you just pulled it up. Uh, processing was ranked like 16,000 and change. So. 12,000. Yeah. But it only has 80 ratings. Man, yeah, there's exactly. only like 13,000 games in existence, too. So, so it's pretty low. <laughs> pretty low. <laughs> but again, uh, you know, uh, the, the whole point was to highlight games that just don't get enough love. Yep. Um, yeah, I'll throw in Pocket Paragons. It's uh, yep. ranked 11,000. It's only got 87 votes. But it's a 7.3. It's a fast game. It's uh, just a little skirmish game, a uh, card game. and But the, the different strategies and things are kind of awesome. The way each character works completely differently than the others and the way they all win differently. Usually you're trying to kill the other person through damage. You can try to kill them through assassin assassinating them like I mentioned earlier. I played one who didn't do any damage at all. Her purpose was to kill them by having them run out of cards. Hmm. A mill a mill strategy. Yeah. Mill. <laughs> yeah, I kind of loved that character. Hmm. And then I also want to mention one more. Um, Knockdown from Awakening Realms Light. Mm. I thought about it. Yeah, so that one, it's ranked 9,000 something. It's only got 100 and something ratings. Mm -hmm. uh, I want this one on there because theme-wise, it is so good. It's You're playing a board game version of like, a, like Street Fighter or something. Yeah. yeah, Tekken. Yeah, it's a 2D fighter. <laughs> yeah, it's a 2D fighter and the way you're moving back and forth and the way that, you know, as you take damage, oh look, there's a chunk, but you can heal that little chunk back, but you can't heal the other part back and all these other things. Everything in it is thematic. Uh, yeah, and it's also not a very uh, expensive or long game. Yeah, I thought it was fun. We played it because uh, when when they came out with it, you could get like promos for other Awakened oh, yeah. Realms games. So yep, you can yep. you can play as like the alien, the alien. from Nemesis yeah. and stuff like oh. that. So so uh, it was it was a cool little yeah, making a two D fighter like the box kind of like turns into, into like the, the stage the, yeah. and stuff. Nice. Oh yeah, yeah I remember that. Uh, Gore Chosen is a game I talk about a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, it's only got 394 ratings, um, 2016, but that's a fantastic game. It's gladiator fighting. And what I really like about that is the um, the way the initiative works. So as you build up your rage, you're adding more cards to this deck. And you shuffle the deck up, and you're flipping a card over. And whoever's card gets flipped gets to go. So you never know who's going to go when. And then as you complete like big attacks, then you lose some rage, you pull some cards out. Then as you get hit, you're adding more cards. And it's just crazy fun. Like you can like decapitate people, you can push them into the spikes on the walls, you can do all types of fun stuff. But apparently, Gore Chosen has been re-implemented and uh, re-implemented into Combat Arena uh, a couple of years ago, and that's got even fewer ratings. It's only got 45. Uh, but apparently, it's the same type of thing, but it's set in the 40k universe. Oh, uh, that makes uh, sense. Uh -huh. yeah. It looks familiar. Good time. 40k. I might have played this one. Could be renamed Gore Chosen. Like I could, I could <laughs> sure, yeah, that. I like, see that. Like in Gore, universe. So uh, for the, for the Warhammer heads out there, uh, Gore Chosen takes place in the um, Age of Sigmar, which is like one of the eras of Warhammer, and then the newer one takes place in 40k. Mm, so, oh, okay. It's like gotcha. two different gotcha. two different type of like eras. Of okay. That. Yeah. yeah. Check out the. Uh, what do they call it? Miniatures rundown. Yeah. For <laughs> what oh, yeah. what that it? means. <laughs> I don't think that it's in there somewhere. It's rundown. Uh, miniatures. That's what I was, was going to say Warhammer rundown, but it's not. It's miniatures rundown. Right. Yeah. 
Yep. There you go, guys. That's our top 10 underrated hidden gems. Uh, make sure you let us know which ones you like the best. Yeah. Uh, pick one from everybody if you want. Uh, but the ones that you've played that you also enjoy and don't think get enough love. Or maybe tell us the ones we missed. Yeah. I'm sure we didn't which, get them all. Which ones were hidden so well that we couldn't find them? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we tried to get them all, but, you know. I'm sure, there's gonna... a lot. There is over 15,000 pages worth of games on Board Game Geek. Probably I missed did not look at all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> possible to get them all. So, tell us what we missed. Yeah. If you like our content, make sure you like, subscribe, ring the bell. Yeah, we, we love getting that. the feedback. We like the extra comments on the channel. If you want to give us even more feedback, you can find us on Facebook. You can join our Discord. Yep. You can hop on our live stream every Wednesday, type a comment. Odds are we'll tag it and we'll answer your question. So, we love the feedback we like interacting with you guys uh so we appreciate it you can also support us on patreon if you want yeah. anything yeah. else guys yeah i'm gonna shamelessly plug myself oh Ooh, do it yeah. do it so i have written a book it's called a sinister love and it is at the moment coming out on april 8th so uh more information as it gets closer available nice. where hopefully on amazon and uh my website, so spencerhickson.com. There you go. Amazing. Cool. His name is at the bottom when we say things. Yeah. Usually. Um, uh, also, I, I just realized it might be 5,000 pages on Board Game Geek. I think I said 15,000. It, it's, it's a five. There's um, a five in there somewhere. Regardless, <laughs> regardless, there's way too many for to scroll through every single page is what I'm trying to say. There's a ton. It's a good problem to have. Lots of good games out there. They all don't get the love they deserve. That's so right. tell us what we missed. Speaking of not getting the love they deserve. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, Thanks, guys, for the board game rundown. I've been Mike, Bob, Spencer, Dan. See you next time. And you can say the title's only three words. <laughs>